<clears throat> Hello, happy early Thanksgiving. How are you, wonderful, beautiful people? My name is Robert Love. I'm a neuroscientist. I specialize in helping people prevent Alzheimer's disease with science. It is the day before Thanksgiving, and I want to give you some healthy Thanksgiving recipes, as well as talk about the benefits of supplements for your brain and how supplements can help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Please put your first name and where you are from in the chat. We are live on both TikTok and YouTube. This is the Lion's Den where we come to support each other and help each other grow and evolve. And we are evolving lions and that we are becoming better and growing better. We look into our evolutionary past to inform our current diet. We support each other and we like lion's mane. Roar. So if you're just arriving, please put your first name and where you are from in the chat. And anytime you make a comment tonight, please put your first name in the chat. That way I can refer to you. And we are both live on TikTok and YouTube. Please join on either platform. I love you too, Larry. No, no, I'm not using two phones at once. I'm using my, my desktop computer and my phone. Hi, Julie. And let me know where y'all are from. Linda from Washington, roar to you. And if you are an evolving lion, give me a roar in the chat, please. Tiffany from Maui. Hi, Tiffany. I have some very good friends from Burning Man in Maui. James from Australia. I love this. There are people all around the world. Julie from Central Missouri. Las Vegas. I used to live in Vegas. I used to live on the southern end of the Strip. Um, Paul from Lexington, Kentucky. Bunch of hearts coming in. You are an evolved lion, determined zone. What's your first name? And roar to you. Phoenix, Arizona. Awesome, Larry. If you're just arriving, please put your first name and where you are from in the chat. If you're an evolving lion, give me a roar, please. Hi, Daisha. Vancouver, British Columbia. Andrea from Florida. Bet that's beautiful right now. Kathy from Roswell, New Mexico. Hi, Kathy. Any other folks who want to put your first name and where you are from? Danielle from Thunder Bay, Ontario. That sounds really cool. Dave from Pennsylvania. Hello from the Philippines. Well, hello. Tiffany, Tiffany Love from Burning Man. Awesome. Or either, or you love Burning Man. Awesome, Tiffany. John from Northern Florida. Very cool. Jamie from Montana. Diane from Washington, D.C. Exclamation point. Triple exclamation point. Jesus from Tejas. Schizophrenia turning to Alzheimer's ADHD supplements. We can certainly talk about that. Jenny from Volcano, California. Is there, a, I'm curious, how many volcanoes are there? And I hope they're not too active. Lauren and Jesse in Louisiana. Awesome. Are there two of you watching? That's so cool. Uh, does memory affect by chemotherapy? Potentially, potentially, yes. If you are making a comment, please put your first name and where you're from in the chat. I'm a retired doctor from Ohio. Where are you? I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio right now. What's your name? Retired doctor from Ohio. Any other lines here? Any other roars coming in? Nardos from Nashville, originally from Eritrea. I don't know where Eritrea is. Welcome. Boyfriend and I are abd watchers. Awesome. Great. And your names are, I'm sorry, Jesse and Lauren. Very cool. Well, hi, Jesse and Lauren. I'm honored to have you both. Naomi from New York. Dwight, Dr. Dwight Bryan. Hi, Dr. Dwight Bryan. And roar to you, Tiffany. I am Leo the Lion. Awesome. Ness from Eastern Tennessee. Been learning so much from you. My short-term memory has decreased a great deal in the last few years. I'm sorry to hear that, Nikki. And I hope uh, you're implementing some of the things you learn here. Dan from San Francisco. Can you speak on dosages of lion's mane? Uh, very simply, follow the dosage on the bottle. Lion's mane can be different concentrations. And so the easiest, safest thing to do is follow the dose on the bottle. Uh, Laura from San Diego, roar, roar to you. Naomi, do you recognize your repeat watchers? I do sometimes. Uh, I do my best. I know I know you, Naomi, but I, um, I'm guessing your name is Naomi. It's a little difficult because uh, TikTok handles are often different than people's names. And, um, you know, different people are on on different nights. But yes, I do recognize some people. It would be much easier if I saw like everyone's face. We were in a room, like if we were in a classroom, I'd really recognize a lot more people. It'd be a very big classroom. Right now it'd be a classroom of 154 people. That'd be a very large lecture hall. I love the idea that we fill a lecture hall with people who are excited about neuroscience and brain health and evolution and wellness 
and supporting each other. It's really a lot of fun. Abby from Nashville, Laura from Arkansas, Akira from Eastern Tennessee. Is there a memory test to see if you have good memory? Yes. Well, hello and hi. Stanell from Weatherford. Love being healthy. Love listening to you. Why, thank you, Stanell. What brand of Lion's Mane is best? Susan from Colorado. Hi, Susan from Colorado. I use um, Lifecycle Lion's Mane, and then I'm coming out with my own supplement soon. I'm at my daughter's in Dayton. Awesome, Dr. Brian. Jamie from outside Baltimore. We got Asheville. I've heard great things about Asheville. Hello, fellow nerd, molecular scientist. Outstanding, Jamie. No, Brian, I'm not at a university. I am research. I'm head of research and CEO of my company, BrainFit for Life. Hello from Texas. Philly here. So I'm glad I stumbled upon your TikTok. I'm terrified of Alzheimer's and dementia. So first thing, I'm glad you're here too. Please don't be terrified. There, as, you, as If you look over, if you watch just three of my videos, you'll see that there's so many things you can do to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. We're going to cover some of those. And then we're going to cover some healthy, healthy, delicious recipes for Thanksgiving that you can use. You can share healthy food with your family. That's great for your brain. Allie from New Orleans, please keep us posted about your supplement. Uh, I, I, I will. I'm, I'm really trying to get us out as soon as I can. And don't worry, my subscribers will get a great discount on it. It'll be really great. I should travel and do lectures. I would love to do that. I think first we're going to do like Zoom lectures. So you all can be in a Zoom room. I can see your faces. That'll be really, really fun. Who would like that? Who would like a, like a Zoom room lecture? We'll figure out how to do that. Starting Smashfish this week. Great job. Yes, let's celebrate some wins. Who's got some wins here? All right, so Jake is celebrating some wins. Jamie, if you want to take the memory test, go below my profile, watch my masterclass on how to prevent Alzheimer's disease, and there's a link to schedule a memory test. So go ahead and do that. Negative side effects from ashwagandha. I felt fatigue from ashwagandha, and um, I've heard more men than women have negative side effects, but they're very, very slight. And I've heard uh, from Dr. Shannon that women do really well. Hello from Canada. Sardines are nasty, though. I need some recipes. All right, Jake. So, Jake, here's some. Here's some. We'll start with the sardine recipe. Very simply, can of sardines, apple cider vinegar. Smash it up. See, see how see how you like the taste. That's one recipe. Number two is get a jar of pickled herring from from Whole Foods. Pour some of the pickled herring juice in there and pour and put the sardines in there and mix it up and and get that flavor of the pickled herring. That's really good. A, a third thing is to make your own mayonnaise. You can look up a recipe for mayonnaise. I recommend making rest mayonnaise with avocado oil, half avocado oil, half olive oil. So you're getting some of those healthy fats, pastured egg yolks. Make sure things are really clean to make sure the mayonnaise is safe. Mayonnaise is made with raw egg yolk. So please be safe. And, um, and then mix in some healthy things. So I like to add coconut aminos for some sweetness. And I'll add some healthy spices, like I'll add some curcumin, I'll add some black pepper, and what else will I add? Maybe a little bit of rosemary. And then I'll use that as a dressing and mix that with the sardines. That's really, really good. So those are some recipes for sardines. You can also just add them onto your salad and then use your favorite salad dressing. And so if you don't want to make your own mayonnaise, simply use your favorite salad dressing. Primal Kitchen is one of my favorite salad dressing companies. They do a really good job of the keto salad dressings. They use high quality ingredients. It's really unfortunate. You have a lot of wonderful people trying to eat healthily and then they make a salad and then they'll put salad dressing on it from the grocery store and it'll be made out of garbage. There'll be vegetable oil and canola oil. If it's not a great company, it almost undoubtedly has canola oil. Canola oil is bad news. Please stay away from it. It's not healthy for us. And it defeats the purpose of eating the salad. Be better just to not, not eat the salad with the canola oil. It's really unfortunate. And restaurants put canola oil in their, in their salad dressing and on their stuff. It's really not good. I know some YouTube folks, please put your first name, where you're from on YouTube. And if you have a question, please post that. Um, all right. And, all right. So a couple of you would like to be on, you'd be on Zoom. We'll figure that out. Let's, we'll try that next week. I'll set up a Zoom room and I'll see if a bunch of y'all can log in. And uh, we'll do the live uh, on TikTok and on Zoom. And so people who want to like raise their hand and want to have their, have their pictures seen, that'll be really fun. Okay. Thoughts on the quality of olive oil in canned sardines. So the olive oil is probably not the best. And so if you don't like that, simply strain it. I like the olive oil in the Costco sardines. 
Those are my favorite. Those are really inexpensive and they last for a very long time. I bought a bunch before the pandemic. And when remember when grocery store shelves were like empty of canned food, I never thought I would see that. Never is the right word. I never thought I would see that in my lifetime. I went there, just gone. I went to Target, just nothing there. I thought, and the meat was all gone at Costco. I thought this is so strange. Thank goodness I bought two years worth of sardines. Literally, I bought two cans of sardines for 365 times two days. So 700 days, I bought that much sardines and I had it in my closet. I was totally set. If you live in British Columbia, Harmonic Arts makes a fantastic pure powder lines made. Awesome. Okay, so we talked about sardine recipe. Low dose naltrexone. I was talking with a functional medicine doctor about that. There's interesting data on that. I don't know the data myself, but low dose naltrexone looks pretty interesting. Uh, I'm not an expert in it yet. I don't know the data yet, and it looks promising. Boy, I missed a lot of comments here. I'm sorry. There's a bunch of y'all just commented. I'm going to see how many. Yes to Zoom rooms. Okay, there we go. Now track zone. V Thoughts on Vivance. Um, I did a video on Vivance and ADHD drugs. Uh, we might get into that a little bit later. I, I like Adderall better than Vivance, and I like exercise better than Adderall. I've great and aniracetam better than Adderall. I've greatly reduced my Adderall um, doing that. I felt a little anxious on um, on Vivance, and I'm not an anxious person. All right, keep spreading the info. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Johnny. Please put your first name if you comment. That way I can I can talk to you with your first name rather than trying to decipher your handle. Wild rice thoughts. Yeah, wild rice actually isn't rice, interestingly enough. It's like a grain. My favorite rice absolutely is black rice or forbidden rice. Forbidden rice is so healthy that only the royalty in China could eat it uh, in, you know, in the Chinese dynasties. I don't know if this is the Tan dynasty, dynasty or the Qin dynasty or the Song dynasty. By the way, Chinese history, really interesting. Each dynasty had their own thing and they had their own art that they were good at. Very cool. So in China, only the wealthiest um, nobility were allowed to eat black rice. It was that healthy. It's got the, the dark polyphenols in it that are rich in nutrients similar to blueberries. So if, if I eat rice, I basically only eat black rice. So I would ditch the, ditch the wild rice and just go with black rice. You said pickle juice with sardines. So pickled herring. So if you go to Whole Foods, they have jars of pickled herring. I just made a post about this. If you look at my recent post, I show a picture of the pickled herring. I ate it tonight. It's delicious. That's great to mix with sardines. Really super easy. Sardines are my favorite. Awesome. Hi from Scotland. Hello, Craig. I like avocado oil in my mayo. Terrific. Sounds delicious. I agree. Hi, Naomi. Would you ever buy coffee from out or only if organic? You know, it's it's nice to be able to flex a little bit. And so if I'm out and I'm at a nice place, I will get coffee, even if it's not 100% organic. I will usually ask them, is this organic? And then if the manager's around, I'll be like, hey, I'd like to request that you get organic. I know it's more expensive. Charge more. And I will say that to them. So I like to, I, I like to educate uh, restaurants and coffee shops when I'm out. Because I'm a consumer, I'm a health conscious consumer. There are more of me out there. There are a lot of us out there. And so I try to get the ball rolling and ask, is this organic? Why not? Who can I talk to about that? I will have some and I request that you get organic. I will pay more. I will pay double the price for organic. I don't, I don't, the price difference isn't that much. Um, but I, I will pay more. And I'll say that to restaurants who are offering salads, restaurants that have salmon. I'll say, hey, do you have wild caught salmon? Okay, please get some and charge more. I will buy it. Okay, Bear on YouTube. Is it healthy to eat wild-caught salmon skin? Yes, I love salmon skin. Oh my gosh, I love salmon skin. So so uh, there's a lot of healthy fat in salmon skin. I definitely like that. It's terrific. And there's even data to show that on chicken, the chicken skin, which is rich in, in fat, um, if it's a healthy chicken, so it's a pasture chicken, there's benefits to that. You know that, that the idea that chicken soup is really good for colds and illness? Well, some of that is thought to be in the fats. Also, um, collagen to get, co so if you cook, excuse me, if you cook chicken bones and make, um, you know, in a stock pot and cook that down, you can get the collagen out of the bones. I believe there's some collagen in the skin too. I'm not a thousand percent on that, but I believe that's also a great way to get collagen is to eat the chicken skin. Yes, eat the, eat, uh, yes, bear, eat the um, skin on the pickled herring. Okay, Ozzy Wally. Mom has Alzheimer's and confusion is common. 
Should we correct her when she says something wrong? I don't know, Ozzy. Um, that's an interesting question. I would say get get mom the help that you can. I would say get her tested to find out what's causing the Alzheimer's. How far along is she? Uh, get her blood check to see if she's nutrient deficient. See if she has um, pre-diabetes. And then I would, I would put her on a low-carb diet. I, it, you can tell someone is, is developing Alzheimer's disease when they crave sugar because their brain's deficient in energy. And so they start reaching for sugar because that's what their brain associates with energy. And what they really need is more fat. And I would get the book, The End of Alzheimer's Program. Seriously, Ozzy, it's so worth it. Implementing some of the stuff in that book is really helpful. I'm so happy I caught your live. Me too, Karina. Is Manuka honey good for you? I don't know what Manuka honey is. Generally speaking, local honey is good. It can help with allergies. Carrie from from Whidbey Island, Washington. Grateful for all I can for all I continue learning from you. Why? Thank you. Well, that's wonderful, Carrie. What have you learned recently? And what are you doing? Love to celebrate your wins. Uh, Hiker nineteen eighteen. If y'all put your first name, I could I can talk to you. <laughs> please, please, please put your first name. Uh, what kind of brain diet is good for dementia? The low carb diet um, and smash fish. Smash fish, say it with me if you know them. Salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. One more time. Salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. Make sure it's wild-caught salmon because otherwise farm-raised salmon can have lice in it. And uh, you want Atlantic mackerel, not king mackerel. Those are rich in healthy uh, fats for the brain. Your brain outside of water is made up primarily of fat. And so if you're going to have a healthy brain, you need the fat intake to repair your brain and even grow new brain cells. I would start there and then avoid sugars, avoid the inflammatory foods, processed and packaged foods are harmful to the brain. They can cause inflammation. They can hurt your mitochondria, all kinds of bad stuff from processed packaged foods and eat lots and lots and lots of vegetables. Recommendation one, stop the bad food. I think you know what bad food is. It's and bread's in there too. Anything high carbohydrate, high packaged foods, high processed, eat a lot of vegetables and eat some smashed fish and that'll be great. And then you can add some MCT oil. And I, I have a fair amount of videos on healthy foods if you want a shorter answer. Jamie, absolute best oil for the majority of things at home in the kitchen. If I could only choose one, it would be MCT oil. It's the most expensive and it's the most powerful. If you take a teaspoon or a tablespoon of MCT oil, start with a teaspoon. A tablespoon can lead to disaster pants. Who's had disaster pants? It's, it's rough. Um, and so I really recommend... Um, starting slow with MCT oil, but you can use it in salad dressing. You can use it in smoothies. You can use it in coffee. You can cook with it. So I would go with that. Otherwise, I would go with olive oil. Olive oil is the most versatile. It's great in salads. And then for, for cooking, generally speaking, I like avocado oil, but I would have all three of them. I mean, if you can afford one, you can afford all three and just use all three most appropriately. If I'm going to saute something. I'm going to use the avocado oil. It's got a higher smoke point. If I'm going to dress something, so if I'm going to add it to steak or vegetables or salad, I'm going to use extra virgin olive oil. And if I'm going to, um, and then otherwise I use MCT oil. I use that, both MCT oil and olive oil in my smoothies. And I'll use MCT oil in my coffee. Eat wild caught salmon and Alaskan blueberries. Ooh, wild blueberries are great. Hi, Gemma. Gemma from New York. Zoom would be awesome. I agree. So what kind of dressing do I do? My, my dressing is mainly apple cider vinegar and extra virgin olive oil with a little bit of salt and pepper. All right, so Bear from YouTube, should I buy magnesium supplement or just take a multivitamin? I don't recommend multivitamins. Here's why. Number one, people get complacent. People take a multivitamin and they think they've done something. Generally speaking, multivitamins don't have the vitamins you need. Multivitamins are usually lacking in substantial um, zinc, and magnesium. These are two really important minerals for the brain. They often do have some vitamin D, some vitamin E, some vitamin A. So they're missing those two key things. They also don't usually have enough vitamin D. Next, people think if they take a multivitamin, they don't need to take anything else. I would start with a magnesium and zinc supplement and then a vitamin D supplement. I would go with those three way before a multivitamin. And if you eat healthy foods, you, you are less likely to require a multivitamin. So I don't recommend multivitamins. Number two, multivitamins are, are potentially not good because they have high levels of copper and iron. High levels of iron are 
and this is the phrase from Bill Bryson, high levels of iron actually rust the inside of you. So you don't want that. So you don't want high levels of iron. Um, most of us have plenty of iron, especially if you eat meat. If you are a vegetarian or vegan, an iron supplement might be a good idea. If you eat lots of spinach and you're, you're a vegan, you probably don't need an iron supplement. And then too much copper is actually can actually create oxidative stress and damage in your brain. Zinc needs to balance that out. So the multivitamins have got it backwards. I, at some point, I'd like to make a multivitamin that's actually designed to have everything you need for the brain. And actually, it would be a lot of pills. So just to have enough magnesium, that would be like two pills. And enough zinc, would that would be a third pill. And so the multivitamin that I would make, it would be at least four pills. Seriously. Um, because that's, I would want you to get your daily dose of magnesium and zinc and vitamin D and vitamin C. And that would be a big, it would be a big supplement. And so most of the, most of the supplements don't have enough magnesium. So they're missing the key things, which is magnesium and zinc, and they have too much copper and iron. So I don't recommend multivitamins. Someone recently posted a study or, or an interview that said, someone said, a doctor said on one of the television shows, I didn't click on the link. Um, I would like to watch it. It says a doctor said, you know, people who take a multivitamin had a massive reduced risk of Alzheimer's disease. I thought that was just insane. I thought that was so silly, unless it's a selection effect. So if you can afford a multivitamin, you can likely afford medical treatment that would reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. Or if you can afford a multivitamin, you likely have higher education and so forth. And so I would like, so, so what they did is an epidemiological study, which means they looked in at what people were doing. They didn't, they had, um, alter anything. I would like to see uh, a double blind placebo controlled study where people get a pill for a year and one of them's a multivitamin, one of them's a placebo and see who's who's more likely to have Alzheimer's at the end of the year and see, see if the effect is real. Started B-complex. Great for you, Pam. My company is called Brain Fit for Life. And if you, um, if you want to learn about my company, you can go to bettermemorysystem.net and that's my it's my company info and then there's a lot of info below the link uh below my profile so you juice i do not juice uh dr stephen gundry actually actually recommends reverse juicing so so put your food so put your fruit in a juicer throw out the juice and eat the pulp eat the fiber that's what he recommends which is really interesting all right naomi what's the best oil for cooking in large amounts i would say avocado oil Love the Costco sardines. Awesome, Pam. Costco sardines are delicious. I agree. I just lost a bunch of comments. Does alcohol cause Alzheimer's? Alcohol can contribute to Alzheimer's. The data I read, this was years ago. I wish I knew this in college. I would have drank a lot less in college because I would have had a reason to. Uh, I was looking for reasons to drink a lot in college and it wasn't hard to find them. And so the data show that if you black out twice a year, from drinking alcohol. So that's where you drink a bunch and you don't remember what happens the next day. That significantly increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Now there's good data to show that generally speaking, even light or moderate alcohol consumption can increase the risk of memory loss and it impairs memory. Number one, alcohol impairs sleep. So that, that first of all, impairs memory. Number two, alcohol, um, Number two, alcohol affects the gut bacteria. Alcohol is not good for your gut bacteria. So that's not good for the brain. And number three, alcohol is bad for the liver. That's just not good for the body in general. Number four, alcohol is inflammatory. Number five, alcohol turns off our prefrontal cortex, which is, you know, when you, when you have a drink and you feel kind of relaxed, but you also censor yourself less, you're actually less aware of what you're saying and why you're saying it. So we just say whatever we want to. And... And that's not a good practice. We don't want to, we don't want to daily engage with a substance that turns off part of our brain. I don't think that's what we want to do. So alcohol just has negative effects on our brain and our well-being overall. And so I don't recommend that. I don't drink alcohol at this point. I I my tolerance is so little right now. I tasted wine with my parents at dinner and I could feel the 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 effect of alcohol on my brain. And I actually lost a little bit of um dexterity. As if, as if I had a full drink, it was really not good. And then I couldn't do my work in the evening. I was uh, not happy. It's like, this, this stinks. I, I, I had, I tasted some wine and now I can't be effective in the evening. This is not a good trade-off for me. All right. I'm sorry. I lost a bunch of, bunch of comments here. I'm gonna try to go through these. Gemma disaster pants from erythritol. Really? 
I've definitely gotten that from xylitol. I haven't gotten that from erythritol. You, Kathy ordered turmeric and black pepper. Excellent. Kathy, I would recommend curcumin, C-U-R-C-U-M-I-N, much more powerful than turmeric. It's So turmeric is 5% curcumin. So I, I don't know what that math is, but so 5% times 20. So curcumin is 20 times more powerful than turmeric. I'd recommend turmeric. MCT oil is great. Raw anchovies are totally great. I've been recovered from depression for 25 years. Good for you, Stanel. Roar to you. Let's give some love to Stanel. Big roar to you. You've been on an antidepressant for 15 years. So that's that sounds helpful to you. Uh, some people get benefit from antidepressants. That's great. Good things to replace dairy with. Yeah, I don't miss dairy really anymore. So in coffee, I mix MCT oil and coconut oil. Sometimes I'll miss mixed grass-fed butter. Today I mixed ghee in there and I blend that in my coffee. That's great. When I have, um, what, what else do you, I mean, cheese, you can get vegan cheese or I simply just don't eat cheese. I just feel much better. And so find out where you eat dairy and then try to replace it. So the big ones, generally speaking, are milk and coffee. A lot of people miss that. And then, um, and then cheese. And so if you can replace those two things, that covers most people. And there's a lot of dairy alternatives out there. Almond milk, coconut milk. Um, and then if you're using heavy cream, you can substitute full fat coconut cream. That's gosh darn delicious. It is expensive and it's worth it because I don't get a stomach ache and I just, I feel better the next day. What's it worth to you to not feel like crap the next day? Is it worth it to not drink those three drinks to not feel like crap the next day? It is for me. My day is valuable. Your day is valuable. And so I will sacrifice the initial pleasure today of sugar, of, of gluten, of bread, of, of alcohol. And I just feel so much better the next day. And it, to me, it's worth it every single time. And same thing with dairy. I, I used to, I love cheese. Cheese is great. I mean, how do you not love cheese? It's, it's fatty. It's delicious. And I feel like garbage when I eat it the next day. Not worth it. What about tuna? The problem with tuna, Jersey girl, is that tuna has, um, it's more likely to have mercury. Tony Robbins got mercury poisoning from eating a lot of tuna. And so you want to eat the smaller smash fish, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. And you can't eat other fish. If you stick with the smash fish, that's going to give you the most nutrients with the least amount of mercury. And, and white fish like tilapia, for example, or Chilean sea bass. These have less of the good fats. So these, these might be healthier for you than other forms of animal protein, but they lack the really great fats that we find in the smash fish. Cindy from YouTube, what about dark chocolate? Thank you for asking. Dark chocolate is awesome. Dark chocolate is gosh darn effing awesome. Seriously, dark chocolate is so good. It promotes neurogenesis and angiogenesis. Neurogenesis, the growth of new brain cells and new neural connections. Angiogenesis is the growth of new blood vessels. Chocolate actually promotes the growth of new blood vessels in your brain. Spectacular. Another thing great about chocolate is the rich in polyphenols, like the dark in, the dark in coffee, the dark in blueberries, the dark in black rice, the red in strawberries, the, the dark in chocolate, rich in polyphenols. Our gut bacteria love that. Chocolate's great for the immune system. It's anti-inflammatory. And um, it's a great substitute for unhealthy foods, which is amazing. One of the most powerful things you can do for your diet is to take out unhealthy foods and put in a healthy food. So if you take the Twinkie, Remove the Twinkie, put in dark chocolate, that's a total win, right? You took out bad food, put in good food. Take out the alcohol, put in water, right? Take out the beer, put in, um, you know, put in a LaCroix with a squeeze of lemon. Take out the candy, add in dark chocolate. Ideally, you want, you want fair trade, um, keto-friendly chocolate. Fair trade, I've talked about this, a lot of chocolate in the United States, really unfortunately, is slave chocolate made in Africa. Basically, large chocolate plantations will lure children from neighboring countries onto their plantation, and then they will make them work and not pay them. It's essentially a slave. And unscrupulous companies in the United States, most of the major chocolate companies would buy and still do buy chocolate from these slave chocolate plantations. Congress has refused to step in and do anything about it. And the word has gotten out. And now some large chocolate companies are labeling their chocolate fair trade which means, uh, ideally, if, assuming that that um, certification is valid, that they're buying it from um, 
from farms where they where they pay the workers. Most of the chocolate in South America is fair trade. It's the chocolate in Africa that can be slave chocolate. I know you don't want to support slavery. I know you want to, you you don't want the energetics of that as well. You don't want your money going to it, and you don't want to put that in your body. So please, please, please buy fair trade chocolate. First of all, second, you want organic. Third, you want one with low sugar. Some of my favorite companies are this one right here, Hue. Hue chocolate, H U, back to human. This is great. My, I, I got my parents to like this. They bought 30 bars, legit 30 bars, and they're just stored in the house. So if they need chocolate, they got it. That's the way to do this. If you find some, same thing with sardines. They bought, uh, uh, I'll show you sometime in the basement, there is just a stack of, I would guess, 50, 50 cans of sardines at least, right? When you find something that really works for you, that tastes good and that's healthy, buy a bunch of it and then you got it. Right. This this you make the decision once if you're committed to eating healthy chocolate and not eating slave chocolate and not eating chocolate with bad sugars. If you find a chocolate you like that's fair trade and organic and 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 low in refined sugar, buy a bunch and then just keep it right. If you find a sardines or a herring or, or a canned food that you like that's super healthy, buy a bunch and then you got it. Make the decision once and then it's easy. Once you fill your kitchen, fill your pantry with healthy food that you like. You can just reach in there and grab something and know you're okay. It's really easy for me to eat healthy because I've removed all the unhealthy food. It's, it makes it so much easier. And so I don't have to use willpower throughout the day to not eat the, the chocolate from the unscrupulous chocolate company or eat bread or eat cheese or eat all the things that taste really good but aren't good for me. And now I just eat things that taste good that are good for me. And I've chosen those things and over time I've collected them and now I've just surrounded myself with them. And so it's very easy to eat healthy food. Good night, Jamie. Favorite tip for getting good night's sleep. Um, a regular sleep time. And then I like putting these on an hour before sleep. I'll put these on at about 1030 Eastern. Help me calm down. And then melatonin. Don't, do not give melatonin to children, please, unless directed by a medical professional. Melatonin can mess with hormones, and we don't know what the impact is on children. On adults, melatonin is thought to be very safe. That's what the data show. There's, to my knowledge, there is no data showing danger, either short-term or long-term, to healthy adults taking melatonin. In fact, we find lots of benefits. We find it reduces cancer. It may help protect against Alzheimer's disease. It promotes good sleep, which helps protect against lots of different diseases. Melatonin is a winner. I take melatonin five, six nights a week. Generally speaking, I, here's my philosophy on this. I learned this from my mentor, Eben Pagan. You don't want to take something every day, right? You don't want to rely on something every day. So you don't want to drink regular coffee every day of the week. You don't want to become dependent upon it. So you can drink regular coffee one day, decaf the next, or regular coffee two days, and then no coffee the next day, or decaf, decaf that day. That way you're not becoming dependent upon caffeine. If you use a nicotine supplement, maybe use it once a week rather than every day. I use nicotine. I haven't used it in the past week, but I'll, I'll suck on a nicotine lozenge uh, when I'm doing work and I want to pick myself up, but I don't want to take caffeine. I don't want to take something stimulating, and that's really helpful to me. I would do that one to three times a week. I have done the last couple of weeks, but it's not good to do something every day because you become dependent upon it. Um, similarly, it's, it's great to take melatonin for the health benefits and to improve your sleep. And it's great to not take it every night. That way you show yourself melatonin is helpful and I don't need melatonin. I can do it without melatonin and it is helpful. Um, I take this most nights. Do I have it here? I do. L-theanine. L-theanine. This is by Nature's Trove. And this helps me settle down and relax and helps me get to sleep. I don't take this every night. I take this most nights because I want to prove to myself I don't need this. And that's my philosophy with supplements. Curcumin. Here, here's my lion's main supplement. I don't take this every day. I take this five, six nights a week. So does that make sense? The idea of cycling supplements. Don't take something every single day unless directed by a medical professional because you want to give your body a chance to live without it. Make sense? All right, Thomas from YouTube. I love sardines. Awesome, Thomas. Uh, the amount of, uh, so question about cacao. You want, first of all, you want to make sure that you enjoy it. There's no point in eating super dark cacao or chocolate if you don't like it. That defeats the purpose of eating chocolate. So, so step one, get some chocolate that you like. Generally speaking, the darker, the better, but, but you got to like it. So if you like dark chocolate, great. If you like medium chocolate, great. You want to have at least, you know, 
50, 60% dark. Some people go like 80%. That's really dark. That's like red wine after dinner, a little piece of chocolate, a lot, a lot of bitter flavors there. Um, but generally speaking, the darker, the better. What's more important than the darkness is you don't want milk chocolate because milk chocolate has dairy in it and there's negative effects of dairy for a lot of people. It prevents the absorption of polyphenols. Polyphenols are the healthy uh, plant nutrients that our gut bacteria love. And there's data to show that the proteins in milk can bind to the polyphenols and reduce absorption. This is why I recommend not adding dairy to your coffee because that can um, reduce the health benefits. It can reduce the polyphenols you absorb. I actually got into a, a discussion with Max Lugavere about this. He, he didn't agree with my perspective and that's okay. And he corrected me. I said, milk is inflammatory for most people. That's not true. Milk is potentially inflammatory for those who have lactose intolerance, which is about 40% of Americans, 70% of humans on planet earth. So depending on how you look at data, either 40% of you, 40% of us in the U S or 70% of humans aren't meant to drink dairy milk because we don't have the enzymes to process lactose and that can cause inflammation. Be, put that aside, adding dairy to your coffee or having milk chocolate, having dairy in your chocolate can reduce the absorption of the healthy polyphenols. So that's not a trade-off I'm willing to make. There is some vegan uh, milk chocolate that's made with coconut milk. That is also really tasty. I made, I, I used to make chocolate. I used to make healthy chocolate. I was trying to make like I was trying to make chocolate that was super good for the brain that tasted great. I did. It was just really expensive and I wasn't able to sell it at a profit. So I had to shut that, shut that down. I'll pick that up one day. Um, once I, once I, once I can do that again, but the idea is you want to make your chocolate as beneficial to you as possible. And so you don't want to have anything in it that is going to impair your ability to absorb the healthy things in chocolate. So you don't want dairy. So not milk chocolate and you don't want, you don't want, um, refined sugar. You don't want um, sugar from, uh, if it just says sugar and um, you want ideally a keto friendly chocolate. So my favorite brands are Hue and Lily's. Those are a winner. Those don't have um, refined sugar. This has coconut sugar and then Lily's has erythritol and stevia. So just stick to those. So just like with fish, you can eat other fish but if you're going to do brain healthy fish, do the smash fish, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring, herring, make the salmon, wild caught, caught salmon. You can have any chocolate you like. If you want to have brain healthy chocolate, get Hue or Lily's or other chocolate that has um, these healthy sweeteners in it. And, and then you're covered. And then just stock up on Lily's. Lily's has, Lily's is everywhere in the United States, I think. And they have a bunch of different chocolates. They have like 80% dark. They have 95% dark. They have 60% dark. They have almond bark. They have, they have salted almond bark. They have all kinds of great stuff. Best supplement for high blood pressure, weight loss. Seriously. Uh, about 40% of Americans are overweight. 70% are obese. And a lot of people are taking blood pressure medication and they're taking cholesterol medication. The solution to this is weight loss. It's getting down in healthy, in healthy weight. How do you do this? One is to sleep better. Uh, paradoxically or unexpectedly. This is the secret to weight loss. Spend more time in bed. Number one, you give your body a chance to heal. Number two, um, just up and about, which makes you less likely to, to seek food. And number three, by spending enough time in bed, you're telling your body, okay, we're in, we're in a good, safe place here. If, if you want to eat a lot of food and gain a lot of weight, stay up all night. Like seriously, try try staying up all night. What do you do? You end up eating. Just just go down the kitchen. Just end up eating. That's just what happens because our body is afraid. Our body says, "Oh my gosh, we're not getting sleep. What's wrong? We better eat as much food as we can because we might need to leave our home in the middle of the night. The neighboring tribe might be here, or there's a pri there's a there's a pride of lions that that's come that's coming nearby, or an ambush of tigers. By the way, that's what's what a group of tigers is called. It's called an ambush of tigers. There's an ambush of tigers nearby. We better eat our bunch of our food and pack our bags because we might need to run. That's what your body thinks when you're not sleeping. So get lots and lots of sleep. Minimum eight hours in bed, I would say. Um, ideally nine hours in bed. That's a great way to lose weight. Another way is to go low carb. Uh, eat more protein. When you eat healthy protein, I mean grass-fed beef, um, grass-fed lamb, pastured chicken, pastured eggs, the smash fish, when you eat that, it's very filling. The challenge with carbohydrates is that they are not filling. In fact, they stimulate us to eat more food. Even worse is the foods with, with high fructose corn syrup. Those turn off our hunger sensors. They actually make it difficult 
to become filled. And this, this food is the most fattening food. Glucose actually promotes fat storage and it turns off the hunger signal. Glucose, high fructose corn syrup, or excuse me, fructose, high fructose corn syrup, and these processed foods are the absolute worst. So if you want to lose weight, sleep more, find some healthy movement you like, uh, excuse me, sleep, sleep first and then your diet, make it low carb, rich, rich in vegetables, rich in healthy proteins, substitute tasty chocolate for any other dessert. You'll feel so much better. And by the way, eat lots of nuts with your dessert. Have a handful of walnuts or almonds with, with half a chocolate bar. Amazing dessert filled with lots of healthy fiber, a lot of brain healthy foods that taste great. Oh my gosh. Walnuts and almonds with chocolate. It's such a winner, right? And you're not going to feel deprived at all. And when you do this over a couple of weeks, the, the pounds will just come off. So I would do that. And if you want to, um, I end up a free gift for you. So Chad Tackett is one of the world's leading experts in sustainable weight loss. He's been doing sustainable weight loss for 27 years. He's helped over 10,000 people lose the weight and keep it off. He's got a free offer. If you go below my profile, there's a link, link tree. I think he's the first link. It says free weight loss roadmap with Chad Tackett. What's going to happen is if you click there, if there's still room, he's only got Last time I checked, he only had 16 slots available, and that was a couple of days ago. So we opened up 16 slots for me and my followers. And so um, these are spots on his calendar where you get a free weight loss roadmap, where they where they ask you, what are your weight loss goals? What foods do you like? What exercises do you like? Um, what's your body type like so we can understand your hormone profile? And then they design a roadmap that's going to help you lose weight. And then they offer continued support if you'd like that. And you get to talk with a, with a certified weight loss coach. This is totally for free. It's amazing. And uh, there's only a couple spots available. I don't know how many are available because I haven't seen the calendar. And you can schedule this if you're serious about losing weight and keeping it off. And this is not a magic pill. This is not a magic bullet. This is not a buy the supplement and the, and the fat melts off. This is you're going to change your diet. This is you're committed to this. This is you're going to get better sleep. This is you're going to find exercise that you like. And this is you're going to have accountability. If that, if you're serious about losing the weight and keeping this off and making the changes necessary that's going to promote optimal health, click the link below my profile and then click the first link that says um, Chad Tackett Free Weight Loss Roadmap. And then, and then then apply there and then and then meet with this team. And please only schedule if you're committed to showing up for your session. There's only a couple of these. We want to make sure they go to the right people. So long answer, Scott, to your blood pressure question is to lose the weight, lose it in a healthy way. And then if you want support, if you want a free weight loss roadmap, there's that below my profile and you can schedule there. Hello, Alma. Um, question about omega-3s versus fish. So fish is better than omega-3s. The smash fish are better than omega-3s. Why? Because the smash fish have other things other than just the, the healthy fatty acids, which are great. They also have B vitamins. Some of them have zinc. There's, um, there's protein in there. They're, they're filling. There's all kinds of benefits of having the fish above the fish oil. Now, I do both. I'm the type of person that eats sardines five days a week and takes fish oil every day or takes fish oil five or six days a week. That's kind of what I do. You don't need to do that. I, I'm on the extreme end of, of health and wellness. At least I, I, I think I'm, I'm moving towards that way as far as my health practices. You don't need to do that. You can do one or the other. You can eat fish or take fish oil. I do both to make sure that I'm covered because some days I don't eat fish. And so eating fish is better than fish oil. And uh, it's a really good idea to take fish oil every day with a B-complex vitamin. That way you're sure to get those healthy omega-3s, especially if you've had traumatic brain injury or you're suffering memory loss um, or, you're, or you just your brain just needs more healthy fat. It's a really good idea to get an excess of that. Really good idea. And interestingly, fish oil reduces blood triglycerides. What does that mean? Triglycerides is a fancy word for fat. So by taking fish oil, which is fat, that reduces fat in your blood. Fascinating. So people used to think that cholesterol in food equals cholesterol in our blood. That makes sense. And people thought that fat in food equals fat in our blood equals fat on our butts and fats around our stomach. That makes sense. That makes logical sense. It's a very straight line. That ain't the way it works. That's not the way the human body works. Uh, basically, how it works is that carbs increase blood um, triglycerides. So carbohydrates, glucose, that becomes fat in the blood. Fascinating. And that can contribute to cholesterol. That can contribute to, um, to, fat, to fat storage. What contributes to fat storage? Something called insulin. Insulin is our fat storage 
an energy using hormone. It's secreted by the pancreas when we eat sugar. And this signals our cells, hey, get ready to take in, um, get ready to take in glucose and energy. And it promotes the storage of fat for the, for the rest of the energy, for the excess energy. If you don't eat foods with glucose, so if you eat a bunch of vegetables and, um, and some meat or you just eat meat and your insulin doesn't go up, your fat storage doesn't go up. Now, I don't know what happens to those calories. I don't know if they just pass through us. I don't know if our body just absorbs nutrients it needs and then poops out the rest. I don't know. I've talked to a couple of, of nutrition experts. I haven't gotten a straight answer yet, but it's very clear. If you don't eat foods that increase insulin, it makes fat storage much more difficult. Really, really interesting. So let's be really simple here. Someone who eats um, a thousand calories of white potato versus someone who eats a thousand calories of grass-fed steak. We'll even say, you know, grass-fed steak with a lot of fat. The person who ate the potato is going to store more of that, more of those calories as fat versus the person who ate the steak and a thousand calories. Does that make sense? The body is not as similar. We've been sold a bill of goods that's not true. We've been sold lies, calories in versus calories out. The human body is not that simple. It's not. It's not as simple as calories in, calories out. It's, um, you know, for example, a soda, a soda, a, a regular soda is a ton of sugar and, and high fructose corn syrup. And it's not as simple as, okay, I'm, I'm drinking a soda that's 200 calories. Now I just need to exercise 200 calories and that'll come off. No, that soda is actually very quickly stored as fat. Here's why. Because it's a ton of sugar. It's a ton of calories with very little fiber and it gets absorbed very, very quickly. So now there's a ton of sugar and a ton of insulin. Our, our body's freaking out. If your blood sugar stays high, it's very dangerous. Type 1 diabetes killed people. Why? Because they had high levels of blood glucose and their body couldn't break it down. Those people flat out died. Like the blood sugar was, if, it, if it's high, it's toxic. High blood sugar kills your brain. It kills your body. I don't know if it specifically kills your brain. It kills your organs. It's bad news. So your body will do anything to bring it down. So it secretes a bunch of insulin. And what happens when your cells have taken in all the sugar they could at, at first pass, because there's so much sugar in the bloodstream, well, your liver then stores that sugar first as glycogen. I think it's the liver that stores as glycogen and then as fat. So that soda basically becomes fat versus 200, let's say the soda is 200 calories versus 200 calories of, let's say, smash fish. Those calories do not become fat. Those calories are absorbed more slowly and those calories are, are digested more slowly and then they're processed and, and stuff is done with it versus the sugar. It hits your bloodstream like that, like a drug. And it is a drug. If you, ha if you have sugar, the, it, the experience is very similar to a drug experience because it's intense and it's fast and you can feel it right away. And sugar is addictive like, like most drugs or like, like most addictive drugs. Most drugs aren't necessarily addictive. And so... Um, so it's not as simple as calories in, calories out. The, the, the drinks, the foods with a ton of sugar, those are fat storing drinks. Those, those foods and drinks become fat. It's not as simple as, oh, I had 200 calories. I need to work out 200 calories. It's not that simple. Okay. I just want to make sure that's clear. Does that make sense? Would you all, would you all give me a roar if that makes sense? Let, let me know if this, this diatribe about food misinformation has made sense. We got a roar from Stella, a roar from Lori, roar from Rains, roar from G Spice. Thank you, Devin. It can be that simple. You get lines made in pill form or a powder or in liquid. Greetings from United Arab Emirates. Awesome. I'd like to go there. Diet drinks way better. No, Brian. No, 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 no. Diet drinks are worse. Here's why. So diet drinks, most of them have something called aspartame. If you want to get really freaked out about the FDA, the FDA approval process and, and, and food safety, look up documentaries on YouTube on aspartame and its approval. It's crazy. Donald Rumsfeld, who was secretary of defense under George W. Bush, he was involved with a company and he got aspartame approved, even though it was so dangerous. Like the studies on aspartame, they, the, 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 so you need to do food safety tests in animals. And so they did tests in, I think it was rats and then in monkeys. So the monkeys had grand mal seizures. They gave monkeys milk, which slow, slows the absorption of aspartame. Milk with aspartame, they had grand mal seizures versus like short seizures. Grand mal is, 
is long. So they last, you know, 30 seconds to two minutes. They lasted long and they were severe. So it caused seizures in monkeys and um, it caused tumors in rats. That, and, the, and they adulterated the data. They would actually like cut out the tumors when they reported the data really bad. Aspartame is the most um, side effect heavy um, FDA approved additive. It's, it's, it's generally recognized as safe, which is the safest certification from the FDA. And it has more side effects than any other food additive. And here's why it's the worst, the absolute worst for your health, aside from the toxic problems it has with the brain and the side effects of it. It's the worst for weight loss. Here's why. The sweet taste of the aspartame on your tongue triggers the release of insulin in the body. Now, um, let's say you drink a diet soda and um, and you don't eat anything else. So your insulin goes up because your body's expecting sugar, but the sugar never comes. So now your cells are hungry. This is like, um, imagine you're at home and every night before dinner, someone rings a dinner bell and you're like, oh boy, dinner. And so the dinner bell rings, but no food happens. Now what? Now you're anticipating food, but it didn't come. Now you're a little bit angry and you're hungry and you're a little bit pissed off. And so when these people who drink a diet soda um, and then they don't eat for a little while, their cells are hungry. And so next time they get exposed to food, they overeat, they eat more. So the diet soda actually causes them to consume more calories. They would actually have consumed less calories if they simply drank a regular soda without high fructose corn syrup corn syrup, but a regular soda with regular sugar. And their body said, oh, I in increased insulin and I absorbed some calories. Okay. They, they, they ate total calories less, including that in the meal than those who took, who ate the diet. soda. the diet soda actually causes them to consume more calories. Number two, it upsets the insulin response, right? Because if you're drinking diet soda you're, and you're increasing your insulin, but no sugar comes, your cells get confused. And so the insulin response goes down. Number three, epidemiological studies. Now these are not clinical trials, but these are trials where they look at people and they say, hey, you're overweight or you're obese, do you drink diet soda? What they found is that obese people were much more likely to drink diet soda. So, th so they think that diet soda actually increases obesity. It certainly doesn't help. So, so, so Mike, I'm not, so Brian, I'm not picking on you. I, so I wanted to spell the myth that a diet soda is even worse than regular soda. Oh my gosh. It's so much worse. And, uh, this was from Stephen Gundry equal. I think this is, is that sucralose? There's sucralose, saccharin and, um, and one and, and aspartame. Um, I think it was sucralose, the, the one that's an equal that kills one serving of that kills about half your gut bacteria. That's horrible. These are your gut buddies. Your gut bacteria are your friends. They process your fiber and other foods you eat, your polyphenols, and give you vitamin K. They make neurotransmitters. They are necessary for health. They help break down foods. And if you eat these artificial chemical sweeteners, it kills them. You kill your gut buddies when you eat these chemicals. Seriously, this is a big problem. Also, when you take unnecessary antibiotics, I'm not telling you not to take antibiotics, but when you take them when they're not necessary, and doctors will actually prescribe antibiotics for something that's viral. C crazy. Read the book, um, The Body by Bill Bryson. He says, listen, it's really concerning. A lot of antibiotics in the United States are used on cattle to fatten them up. That's a problem. They don't allow that in Europe, but we allow it here in the United States. Again, the FDA not doing a good job. And a lot of antibiotics are prescribed to humans who have a virus. Crazy, right? That ain't helping anybody. That's hurting things. And so when you eat these artificial chemical sweeteners, I don't mean um, erythritol and xylitol and allulose. Those are calorie-free sweeteners or stevia or monk fruit sugar. So, so here are the healthy low calorie sweeteners, stevia, monk fruit sugar, erythritol, allulose, and to some extent, xylitol. So I think those are five. Those are made from natural ingredients. Those are not chemical artificial sweeteners. Those don't kill your gut buddies. The, the chemicals, aspartame, sucralose, and saccharin, those do kill your gut buddies. Okay. Does, does that make sense? Give me a roar if that makes sense about the artificial sweeteners, about the diet being worse than, than the regular and how, how those can kill your gut buddies. Give me a roar if that all makes sense. Yeah. Monk fruit's great. Thank you, Julie. Splendid sucralose. Thank you. I, I, I sometimes get confused about those. Can you explain why you can't burn off sugary drinks? Yes. I can go into that a little bit more.
I think Stevia is pretty safe, Love Lavender. Stevia has been used in Japan for a long time. I think it's pretty safe. And there's even some data to show that Stevia can help with cancer. Um, and I'm and the thing about science, and I hope you consider yourself a scientist or a citizen scientist, someone who, who cares about the data, keep looking because science changes, right? So eggs used to be bad for you. Now they're good for you. The yolk used to be awful for you. Now that's the best part, right? Carbohydrates used to be good for you. Fat used to be bad. Now it's opposite. The universe, um, used to, the used to, space used to just be empty space with no mass, no mass is in like no weight. Um, now we believe, or physicists believe, that the distance between stars is comprised of black of dark matter, and dark matter is actually 80% of the mass of the universe. So empty space went from having no mass to 80% of the mass of the universe. So science changes. So you got to be flexible on your beliefs. It's really hard to be a scientist if you're not open to new ideas, new opinions, and new data. So stay flexible. And so I'm open to the idea that some of the natural sweeteners like stevia and monk fruit sugar might not be great for you. I'm open to that idea. I haven't seen that data. Question on YouTube. Been intermittent fasting for three weeks. This is Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Been intermittent fasting for three weeks. Very clean eating for only six hours. That's awesome. No weight loss. Any thoughts? Um, yeah, I would, I would schedule a session with Chad Tackett and his team. So, so Carrie, subscribe to my TikTok station and click my link tree. And, and click the first link and schedule something with Chad Tackett and his team because it shows that you're you're serious about eating eating better. You're you're intermittent fasting. That's a big deal. And so that weight loss, if you're doing it correctly, should follow. And so I would need to get more into your diet and what else you're eating, what your activity levels are. It would take a while to figure out why this is happening. Um, but if you're only eating in a six hour window, you ideally you would be eating less. Than if you ate over the majority of that time, over, over the majority of the day, and most people lose weight with intermittent fasting. And so another thing you can do is go keto. I recommend doing keto with a coach uh, because keto can, it's a little, um, it can be a little difficult. So you want to make sure that you're doing that correctly. That would be, that's my thoughts, Carrie. Linda, what about monk fruit sugar? Yeah, monk fruit sugar is great. Monk fruit sugar, stevia, xylitol, erythritol. Too much xylitol, by the way, can cause disaster pants. Uh, this was three this is before the pandemic, this is three or four years ago, I made a xylitol, um, I made a xylitol Italian dessert and it was so very, very good. And I ate a bunch of it and I totally had disaster pants. I was, it was New Year's Eve, I was at a tuxedo, I was at my best friend's house. I had to keep on getting up and going to the bathroom. It was bad news. So don't have too much xylitol, but erythritol generally is, is, is a lot safer and uh, monk fruit sugar and stevia don't have disaster pants issues. So those can be really good. Cindy, I thought I was the only one who knew about Rumsfeld and aspartame. Totally. Yeah. You want, you want to have, you want to blow your mind and impress your friends and family tomorrow at Thanksgiving. After this, go onto YouTube. By the way, the, the replay of this is going to be on YouTube. So if you want, you want to want to rewatch this, please subscribe on YouTube and you can watch this. Search aspartame Donald Rumsfeld documentary and you'll find a bunch of aspartame documentaries. It's crazy. Aspartame equals wood alcohol. No, I think asp I don't think aspartame is from wood alcohol. Aspartame was made in a laboratory. Um, ethanol is ethanol wood alcohol or methanol? I think it's methanol is a wood alcohol. Um, all right, what other questions do we have? Okay, we got a bunch of roars. Oh, there's 51 new messages. All right, I'm not going to be able to get to all these. Let me do my best here. So if you're just arriving, please put your first name and where you're from in the chat. If you make a question or comment, please put your first name. That way I can talk to you much easier. Monk fruit's difficult on the stomach. Um, expressions of joy, that's interesting. I'm wondering if you're using, are you using crystallized monk fruit? That's erythritol plus monk fruit. So usually if people have stomach issues, it's from xylitol or, or erythritol, not the monk fruit itself. Monk fruit is very, very strong like stevia. And so if you have stomach issues, my guess is you're actually eating erythritol plus monk fruit sugar. I wish this didn't just jump like this. Thoughts on multivitamin. Yeah, I covered that earlier. Multivitamins lack zinc and magnesium, and they have too much iron and copper. So I don't recommend multivitamins. And please do take some supplements. Like if you're taking a multivitamin, don't just stop. I'd recommend replacing that with, with, with other supplements to make sure you're getting the things you need. Disaster pants. Yes, it's very funny. I like drinking tea. Do you have recommendations on some benefits? Yeah, tea's great. There's a great study from Japan of a thousand Japanese people. This is one of my favorite studies. Um, 
And what they did was they looked at people, those who drank two cups of green tea a day had a 40, I think it was a 42% reduction in their symptoms of dementia. Two cups of green tea a day, 42% decrease in their symptoms of dementia. Amazing. So green tea is rich in antioxidants. It's rich in polyphenols. It also has some caffeine and L-theanine. L-theanine, that's this. We talked about this earlier. L-theanine is relaxing. It can reduce stress, can reduce cortisol. This can help improve the immune system. Caffeine increases the efficacy and the density of dopamine receptors, all kinds of benefits of that. Plus the L-theanine makes it kind of a calm and, 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 and green tea is anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. I think it's anti-inflammatory. I know it's antioxidant, all kinds of benefits of green tea. So green tea on its own, two cups a day, really great for the brain. And if you want to sweeten it, I like stevia, ginger, ginger goes great. Organic ginger, add a little bit of powder. So here's how I make my, my green tea. I actually use matcha. Matcha is like green tea on steroids. Who knows about matcha? Give me a roar in the chat if you know about matcha. So matcha is basically green tea leaves ground up. So if you're going to compare that to green tea, green tea, you have a tea bag and you soak that in the, um, in, in the, in the water and then you pull it out. Matcha, you grind up the tea leaves and put it in there and then you drink them. So you're consuming the whole tea leaf. It is 10 times richer in antioxidants than green tea. So I like matcha. And so and it does taste rough. I, I had to learn to like the taste. I add it to my smoothie. I can't taste it. I can taste it a little bit, but um, I get I get a lot of my matcha in my smoothies now. Um, but you can drink it just on its own. So matcha plus ginger or green tea plus ginger, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of stevia. Amazing. If matcha, I'd like to add some MCT oil. I don't like MCT oil in my green tea. That doesn't feel good in my stomach for some reason. I don't know why. But MCT with matcha and cinnamon, great. So that's cinnamon. Matcha is like amazing for your brain. Um, Carrie, how do you reach out to him? So Carrie, are you subscribed to me on TikTok? That's where a lot of my content is. It's my same handle. It's Robert WB Love on TikTok. And then my first link in the link tree is Chad Tackett. And he'll, he'll get you set up. Um, at the end of this, if you haven't been able to figure that out, um, I'll, I'll, I'll post the link in here. I'll post the link in here at the end, Carrie. Does that sound good? Here, let me do that now while we're chatting. Let me look through some company. Uh, so if you're just arriving and your first name, where you're from the chat, I'm going to scroll through here and look, look through some questions that I can answer. People are coming in. Roar, roar, outstanding. Toya, you prefer Oolong. Oolong's great. Um, let's see here. Link three. All right. So I'd love to tell you about some recipes for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Thank the goodness. Thank the universe. Thank the good Lord. Isn't this wonderful? We're in this world. Uh, the pandemic is somewhat reduced, which is great. So we're not totally, um, freaking out anymore, which is just lovely. And we get to gather with friends and family and we get to express gratitude and you get to have wonderful conversations with people you love. And because you're in the lion's den, clearly you care about your health. You care about others. You want to support others. This is your opportunity to share interesting information with people you love and potentially bring a great dish to the, um, to the dinner and or share healthy recipes. So I want to give you some healthy recipes. And then if you want, we can get, do some talking points on Alzheimer's disease and dementia and supplements, if that'll be helpful. So I think you understand about sugar, right? Why soda is so bad. It's not calories in, calories out. Sugar basically becomes stored as fat instantly, whereas the same amount of calories as protein or vegetables, that gets used by the body because it's absorbed and digested more slowly, right? So if people in your circle are drinking, and it's important not to be preachy in, um, in family events. I've been preachy for years. I've been telling my family, you got to stop eating sugar. You got to stop drinking alcohol. You got to stop eating that kind of food. What do you think the response is to that? When I come in there and you know, I'm, you know, I'm my parents son or I'm the younger cousin, I'm like, yo, you got to stop eating this. This stuff's poison. It goes over horribly. And then they don't want to talk to me. And then I'm sitting alone in the corner and playing with dogs because no one wants to talk to me. The guy who won't eat sugar and won't drink alcohol and says everyone's eating poison. So I don't recommend doing that. That's a great way to be ostracized during Thanksgiving. Instead, find out what's important to your friends and family. Most of them will say my health at some level. And then you can say, me too. Can I share, like, are, I've, been, I've been learning some stuff about health. Can, 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 I, can I tell you something that I learned? Or 
um, I've been learning about health. What are you doing for your health? Or what are you concerned about? And just talk to them about their health. And then it, then in the conversation, share a few things. I have found leading with information. You're like, hey, let me tell you about why organic food is so helpful or why you want to eat grass-fed beef or why sugar is so bad for you or why that alcohol is going to increase your risk of Alzheimer's disease. That doesn't work. In fact, it digs people in. They entrench Right. So if you go up to someone and attack their perspective, this works really well in politics, whatever, you know, Republican, Democrat, independent, libertarian. If you come right up to them and say your political view is wrong, here's why. Guess what they do? They just dig deeper. They get more entrenched. Right. So don't I don't recommend telling people they're eating really unhealthy, bad food. I recommend getting to know them. And or, well, you probably already know them, but talk to them, finding out what's really important to them and then share what you're up to. You know, if you're taking, if you're eating more sardines, tell them why. Like, hey, I just want you to know I'm eating more sardines. I feel really great. Or I'm taking these supplements. I feel really great. Or I'm getting better sleep and I'm feeling really great. Or I'm doing more walking and I I, I feel really good. And I that's, that's what I'm up to. Just share the good things that you're doing. If they want to learn more, then share them. I have an aunt and I called her on her birthday and we talked for about an hour. And I said, what, what do you, what's important to you? What do you want to achieve this year of your life? She said, I'd like to lose some weight. And I dropped a hint. I said, I know a supplement that significantly reduces appetite. And I've told you about a supplement that does this. It's called L-tyrosine. L-tyrosine. It's a precursor to dopamine. Dopamine decreases appetite and increases energy. Pretty good deal, right? So I said, I know a supplement that can be really helpful. And she said, oh, that's interesting. Is she serious about weight loss? Not so much. And so I didn't say anything else. I dropped a hint. I said, hey, I have a shortcut for you that can be helpful. She didn't, she didn't ask for anything else. So I didn't push it. So you can drop little seeds like that. Hey, I know a supplement that improves memory. Or I know a supplement that helps with weight loss. Or hey, melatonin can help, can help prevent cancer. You can say these things, but don't push it too hard. That makes sense? Give me a roar if that makes sense. All right. So um, register with Chad Hackett. Lost blueprint here. Yeah. Barry, I just put that in the chat for you here. Anything I can recommend for cough, OTC not working? Yes, sleep and no alcohol and no sugar. I My body's become so sensitive. This is not, I, I wish it weren't this way, but so sensitive. When I would just have one drink, I was much more likely to wake up with like a cough or a sore throat the next day. That sucked. And I like drinking white Russians. I like the Big Lebowski. I like having a white Russian. When I when I watch the Big Lebowski, I'd make my own Kahlua. I would take organic coffee and I would take vodka and I would take um, erythritol and I'd make my own low sugar alcohol or low sugar Kahlua. And I'd mix it with a healthy vodka and then coconut milk. So I wasn't having dairy. And I would still not feel good the next day. Same thing when I would eat sugar. If I ate sugar or drank alcohol, I was much more likely to feel sick the next day. And so, um, so Elviana, if you're not feeling good, I would recommend reducing your sugar and your alcohol that day and improve your sleep and just spend more time in bed. That often helps. And then generally speaking, regular exercise increases your immune system and that helps prevent, um, helps prevent disease. Okay, so tell me what you all want to learn for Thanksgiving. We're coming up, ooh, 10.30. I'm supposed to put my glasses on. All right. I'm going to wait a little bit, but I'm going to put my glasses on soon. So let me know what you want me to cover for Thanksgiving that will be helpful to you and your friends and family. We can talk about recipes. We can talk about supplements. Kelly from Las Vegas, what do I think about Tudka? I don't know what that is. Yo, attack the show, what up? Matcha, mm. what roar? This is Moh Mohammed, welcome. This is the this is the lion's den, we are evolving lions. It's a great place to roar. Oh my gosh, there's 99 comments here. I don't know how I'm gonna get through all these. All right, I'm gonna skip to the bottom. I'm sorry if I missed your comment. He is crazy, me? A little bit, but crazy in a good way. I think, I, I mean, it's crazy that the FDA thinks aspartame is safe. That's crazy to me, the data show it's not. It's crazy that the United States is the richest country in the world and we spend more, and we have a declining um, lifespan. The lifespan in the United States has been going down for the last five years. It's been going up ever since World War II. And it's been going down the last five years, I think, because of our food supply. That's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. The richest nation in the world 
40% of people are overweight, 70% are obese, and we allow sugar at the checkout. That's crazy to me. So I, I, I think I'm living in a crazy world. And um, it's also crazy to me that marijuana, cannabis, is a Schedule One narcotic. According to the government, that means that marijuana has no medicinal use. Well, Harvard disagrees with that. Johns Hopkins disagrees with that. Almost every major medical institution disagrees with that. They find there's some benefit to marijuana for pain, for cancer. In fact, uh, cannabis, marijuana, THC, and CBD in Petri dishes kills cancer cells. That was research from Spain eight years ago. And, and the, the, the federal government registers that as more addictive and dangerous than cocaine. We're living in a crazy world. <laughs> where marijuana is more dangerous than cocaine, according to the federal government. And I'm not kidding you here. Just look up scheduled of drugs. Um, marijuana is one of the worst. It's crazy. Okay. Best supplements for anxiety. Thank you, Karina. Okay. So what are your questions for... Um, what are your questions for... Um, Thanksgiving. I'm seeing a lot of I'm crazy. It's interesting. Melatonin. Melatonin is great for adults, not good for children. Please don't give it to children. Emma, an anti-cancer supplement? Melatonin. Melatonin is amazing for cancer, as is fasting. So cancer cells ravenously consume sugar. If you want to prevent that, if you want to prevent cancer cells from growing, the ketogenic diet and fasting are terrific for that. There's great data on keto. And then there's great data for um, there's great data for fasting before and after chemotherapy. It's so very, very good. Love all the hearts come in. Okay, so we got supplements for ADHD. What else do you all want to learn? I love you too, Alex. Tell me more about weight loss. Enjoy your lives. Thank you, Jeannie. What can you put in your coffee for fasting? All right, this is a real quick one. MCT oil. So here's what not to add to your coffee. Any type of sugar or protein. You can stay in a fasted state if you don't increase your blood sugar or your insulin or something called mTOR. This stands for mammalian target of rapamycin or mechanistic target of rapamycin, depending upon who you are. If you don't spike mTOR and you don't spike insulin or glucose, you can remain in a fasted state. So you can have calories. What does that mean? What's left? It basically means you can have calories from fat. So you can add fat to your coffee. That's grass-fed butter or ghee or MCT oil or coconut oil. Those four types of oils, I wouldn't add all of them. And then go slowly. If you add too much, you can get disaster pans. And um, so you can add that to your coffee. And then you can add spices. You can have cinnamon, cinnamon, curcumin, black pepper, those are great. And then a little stevia or monk fruit sugar. So you can add a sweetener, but it's got to be a calorie-free sweetener. Make sense, Mercy Grace? So you can add M so I had MCT oil, some cinnamon, some curcumin, some black pepper, and some stevia. And that's my coffee when I'm fasting. Steve instead of sugar and coffee. Yes. Hostess, I'm trying to answer questions. There's 276 of you, and there's there's hundreds of comments. There's tryptophan in, in Turkey. Tryptophan is a precursor to 5-HTP. Yes, that's very correct. Hi, Joe from Florida. What do I think of reishi mushrooms? I think mushrooms are amazing. So this, this is a great factoid for Thanksgiving. This is great. According to research from Singapore, People who eat two servings of mushrooms a week or two cups of mushrooms a week, choose either one of those, they have, I think it's a 40% reduction in the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Amazing. Dr. Stephen Gundry quoted this, this research. I looked it up. You can look it up right now. Simply search Singapore mushrooms, Alzheimer's. You'll find the study. So what does this mean? It means you want to eat two cups or two servings of mushrooms a week. Mushrooms are so good for us. We don't understand why. We simply don't know. Mushrooms are very complex and sophisticated. The, the network of mushrooms, is called, I think it's called mycelia or mycelium. It's underneath the ground, and it's as complex as your brain. The connections between mushrooms, the, flat, the fruiting bodies, which is what we see above the earth, it's so complex underground, and it's communicating with um, other plants and with, with the mushrooms that spread up. They, they have this massive communication network. We do not understand mushrooms and how powerful they are. 
and we don't understand the healing power of mushrooms. We're just beginning to understand. For example, lion's mane can help grow new brain cells. That's gosh darn amazing. I mean, my goodness, talk about a miracle. We've been looking for drugs to help grow new brain cells and protect against Alzheimer's disease. Lion's mane, the mushroom does it, and it tastes like meat. If you get um, like uh, if you get the food lion's mane, you get the mushrooms, you chop it up and you, you saute it and you add it to food, it's got like this meaty, delicious texture to it. It's amazing. Lobster mushrooms, another one that tastes great. And so mushrooms, generally speaking, are simply excellent. Eat lots of them. Eat your favorite worms, ones. Eat them regularly. They're so very, very good. Rishi mushrooms are great, as are lion's mane, as are shiitake, as, as are maitake. Jim Johnson, you keep on saying he's crazy. I, I saw you the first four times. And welcome to the lion's den. I am a little bit excited today. I don't know if I'm worse than, than other days. I don't know what I was talking about. Was I talking about aspartame? Was that? I mean, the aspartame story is absolutely nuts. Okay, I'm going to scroll to the bottom here. All right, what do you all want to learn? Thoughts on turkey tail? Turkey tail is amazing, really good for um, immune system. Green tea for fasting, yes. So when you fast, you can have coffee, you can have tea. That's it. And you could have, I think you can have lemon juice. I'm fine with people calling me crazy. That means I'm, I'm doing something interesting. Brands for supplements. I like Thorn and Garden of Life. I know people say Garden of Life is bought by Nestle. They did have a really good product. I don't know if they still do. Um, and then if you're going to buy something on the internet, you want to make sure they have a good return policy that shows they stand behind their product. I don't know about Tutka. You're the second person to ask me that. Milk thistle is great. Milk thistle is great for protecting your liver. Uh, a natural medicine doctor I talked to, no, a functional medicine doctor, he, he gave... Uh, huge doses of milk thistle to a doctor that was dying of, of liver disease from chemotherapy and it saved his life. So milk thistle is extremely safe, very good for your liver. Paul Stamets. Yeah, Paul Stamets is the man. He's great. I actually got to moderate a panel with him this summer. He's very cool. He had an issue with portobellos. Really? That's surprising. Jim Johnson, you're welcome to be here. Call me, call me crazy if you like. I just, I, I'm, I'm semi entertained by it. What brand of Lions Mane? I like Life Cycle, and I will be coming out with my own Lions Mane. I will tell you when it comes out. I promise. Sorry, it's taking so long. Chaga mushrooms are great. I agree. How do you know what brands to trust? So a couple of things you want to look for. You want to look for GMP certified. That means general manu, gen, uh, good manufacturing practice. So GMP certified. Third party tested. That means a third party is looking to make sure that what's in the supplements is actually what's in the supplements. So if you look at a supplement label, it says L-theanine, right? And so does it really contain L-theanine? Well, you want it to be third party tested to make sure it contains L-theanine. So those are two things. Uh, third party tested, GMP certified. And then organic is often good. Yes, you can cook the mushrooms to still get benefits. Any kind of mushrooms, according to this study. So it could be portobello. Could be white, could be button, could be lobster, lion's mane, shiitake, maitake, cordyceps. All right, what, what, do you, what would you like to learn before, um, for, uh, for Thanksgiving? Do you wanna learn any recipes? I got a great um, uh, what is this? It's sweet potato. I got a great sweet potato recipe. Chaga tea is good. Kids and melatonin. Don't give kids melatonin. Please, please, please freestyle. Do not give children melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone. You don't want to give um, you you don't want to give children things that alter their hormones unless you really know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing with children. By the way, the things that I share. Not medical advice. I'm not a medical doctor. Not giving you medical advice. I'm sharing the science with you and my understanding of the science. And I'm certainly not a pediatrician. I don't know what's best for children. I also don't know what's best for nursing mothers or pregnant women. What, I, what I'm sharing with you is basically for healthy adults who are not pregnant, not nursing, and are over the age of 25. 20, why 25? Because 25 is the age when the brain becomes basically an adult brain. Prior to that, the brain is, is, is changing pretty rapidly. Okay, so a bunch of y'all are here right now. If you're just arriving, please put your first name, where you're from in the chat. And then if you have a question, 
Um, let me know. I'm not ignoring your question, Joyous. What's your question? You know, <laughs> if you put, I'm ignoring my question, and then you put what it is, that'd be great. Also, Joyce, please put your first name. That way I can talk to you. Because now, now, Joyce, now I got to scroll through like a bunch of comments to try to find your question. Put, put your question in, and then I can do my best. All right, I got one for sweet potato recipe. Yes, sweet potato recipe. Nanohydroxy, what dose of melatonin? Um, for sleep, two to five milligrams is plenty. I take 12, which is the big dose because I want the anti-cancer benefits. And please follow the instructions on the bottle, not give any medical advice. Did I already talk about curcumin? Yeah, curcumin rocks. Curcumin protects the brain from inflammation it, and it also prevents the accumulation of plaque in the brain. Awesome. Organic, organic corn, is that good? Alex Neely, no, organic corn, or basically corn, no bueno. Corn is a grain and uh, the way that I eat, so, so this is the lion's den. We are evolving lions here. What does that mean? Number one, we are improving ourselves. We're into evolution and personal growth. Number two, we look to our evolutionary past, in the past, this way, we look in the past to see what our ancestors ate to inform our diet. What did our ancestors eat? So up until 10,000 years ago, before the birth of civilization in the Fertile Crescent, Mesopotamia, which is now modern day Iran and Iraq, prior to farming there and the birth of civilization, human beings were foragers and hunters. That means we ate wild plants and meat when we could catch something. So what does that mean? Today, to, to equate that today, we ate vegetables, nuts, sometimes fruit in the summer, fish if we could catch them, and then meat if we could hunt it. That's what our ancestors ate, primarily speaking. We didn't start eating grains. So think wheat, think corn, think barley, think any, any agricultural product that's not a vegetable or a fruit. We didn't eat those until 10,000 years ago. So most, so most, the vast majority of our evolutionary history. So Homo erectus is 2 million years ago. Human beings have existed on planet Earth as Homo sapiens for approximately 100 to 200,000 years. We don't know the exact date, but something in that area. So we'll say 100,000 years. Human beings, 100,000 years. It wasn't until 10,000 years ago when we started eating um, agricultural food like grains and, and corn, corn's in there. So corn, quinoa, even the ancient grains, your rices, um, wheat. We didn't eat that until recently. And so I don't want to eat those foods, generally speaking, because my DNA did not evolve eating those foods. My DNA evolved eating wild plants and then the occasional um, meat or fish if they were able to catch it. So that's what I try to eat most of the time. Does that make sense? I don't have a lion's mane recipe, Kiki. There are so, oh, my favorite lion's mane recipe is a lion's mane. Um, it's a curcumin, oh, it's a curry, a lion's mane curry. So search lion's mane curry, they're so delicious. Or find a mushroom curry and just insert lion's mane for the portobellos, it's so delicious. Magnesium for sleep, um, magnesium threonate or magnesium chelate for sleep. Spinach, is it good for you? Uh, yes and no. Spinach has oxalates in it. Um, spinach can be damaging to your teeth. It's very, very acidic and the oxalates can be not good. Same thing with kale, um, but it does have nutrients in it. If you do eat spinach or kale, you want to make sure that you have fat with it to absorb the fat soluble vitamins. Supplements for restless leg syndrome. I'm not familiar with what to do with restless leg syndrome. My guess would be magnesium, like magnesium malate, magnesium um, glycinate, and exercise. I, I think more exercise. That's that's helped me. Um, I don't have restless leg syndrome, but that's helped me just sleep better. Okay, dear mama, friend with kidney and liver cancer who lived 10 years longer than told due to milk this on diet. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, dear mama. Okay, so here's someone who took milk thistle and lived an extra 10 years with cancer. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that, dear mama. Big roar to you. Okay, Elviana from YouTube. Thank you. I have a viral upper respiratory infection trying to get relief. What do I think about mushroom coffee? Mushroom coffee is great. Regular coffee is great. And so any opportunity you have to consume more mushrooms, probably a good idea. And Coffee is not bad. Some people don't like coffee. Some people don't get along with coffee. Some people don't do well with caffeine. People have heart issues or blood pressure issues. Sometimes they don't do well with caffeine. Either do decaf or do the mushroom tea, do the mushroom coffee. You don't need to drink coffee, but coffee has many benefits of it, especially if 
the um, the polyphenols in it. Okay, it's 11. Definitely time for the blue blockers here. All right. Sweet potato recipe. All right, let's do it. So here's the sweet potato recipe. You For however many people you're cooking for, you want about at least half a sweet potato per person. And then roast the sweet potatoes. Organic is best. Roast the sweet potatoes in the oven at 420 um, until they're super soft in the middle. The great thing is they're really hard to overcook. If you're roasting on 4, 420, you know, it could take an hour. It might take two hours depending upon the size. Make sure you poke holes in the top with a fork so that way the um, they don't explode. People have talked about with potatoes that if you if you cook them in the oven but you don't poke holes that they can explode. So and that's what we learned in culinary school as well. So so poke holes in it. And then, um, oh, to make sh- to not have like that ooze from the sweet potato. So sometimes they'll ooze out and like they can they can stain your um, the oven. Put some parchment paper on them. So parchment paper on a sheet tray, sweet potatoes with holes poked in them, make them organic. Roast those until and, until you squeeze them. They're super soft. Take them out of the oven. Let them cool. Then take the skins off. Keep the skins separate. You can do something fun with those later. So you got so so to review the recipe. Let's say you're cooking for ten people. You want five sweet potatoes, five organic sweet potatoes. Poke holes in them, roast them in the oven at four twenty. Let them cool. Take off the skins. Now mash those up. Now you got some sweet potato mash. Next, heat up some of your favorite nut milk. This could be coconut milk. This could be almond milk. This could be um, cashew milk. It could even be be oat milk. And so so heat that up. Let's say let's say heat up one two cups. And then add some add some of your favorite fat. This could be coconut oil. This could be um, this could be grass fed butter. And then melt that in there. However much fat you want to add. And then slowly start to add that to the to the mashed up sweet potatoes and mix that in until you get a good consistency. So you don't want to dump it all in because that might make your sweet potato too creamy, right, or too like runny. So add some, mix it in until you get the texture that you like, and then season it with salt and pepper. This might take some time. Because potatoes absorb a lot of salt. So add add some salt, mix it in, taste it. Add some more salt, mix it in, taste it. So when I would cook Thanksgiving dinner, I would rarely eat when I was at the dinner table because I was tasting food all day long in the kitchen. And so you might need to taste it five, six times to get that salt right. Then once the salt is right, get the pepper right. And that's it. So it's basically sweet potatoes and then your favorite nut milk heated up with with your favorite fat, either um, coconut oil or grass-fed butter, or ghee, that melted, mixed into the potatoes, and you might use like a big heavy wire wire whip, or, or a big wooden spoon, something powerful to, to mix it with, and then taste it, and just mix it with salt and pepper. So th- this means no brown sugar, this means no marshmallows, those things, to me, they destroy the flavor of the sweet potato, right? So we just got sweet potato with a little bit of fat, or a little bit of cream, and um, by the way, you can use full fat coconut cream, and then um, you're just using salt. So it's salt, pepper, sweet potato with a little bit of fat. So good. It really honors the sweet potato. It lets you taste it. And it's super healthy for you. By putting all the sugar, by putting the brown sugar, by putting the white sugar, by putting the honey, by putting the maple syrup, by putting the marshmallows, marshmallows. Sweet potatoes are sweet enough. It's in the name. It's in the name. It's the first word. It's sweet. Sweet potatoes are already sweet. Sweet potato, a little fat, salt, and pepper. Amazing. That's a great, great recipe and people love it. Now, if you are committed to using white potatoes, which I do not recommend, I don't recommend white potatoes, they spike insulin, they're not nearly as healthy, they're not nearly as delicious as sweet potatoes, but if you really wanna use them, you can add half the amount of white potatoes as sweet potatoes. So let's say you're cooking for 10 people, you got five sweet potatoes, you can add one to two white potatoes, mix that in there as well, it changes the texture a little bit. It changes the texture more like um, mashed potatoes. I don't, you, you don't need to do that. I don't recommend that. But if people just like, I need to have white potatoes at Thanksgiving, mix them in with the sweet potatoes. That's really good. Okay. Does that make sense? You can also use yams. Sweet potatoes and yams are pretty much interchangeable in cooking. Is anybody understanding the recipe? Did that make sense? All right. Can I do sweet potato with pecans? Yes, you can. Monk fruit sugar, be careful because monk fruit sugar is so powerful that it's easy to mess up. And if you add too much, it's no bueno. So don't add too much. So I I wouldn't sweeten it with anything. Sweet potatoes are sweet enough. 
And then by, by not adding a sweetener to it, you're letting people enjoy the sweet potato itself and you're training people to have more a more sophisticated palate. And so if people are used to eating um, soda and they're used to eating um, you know, packaged foods, their tongue has been overstimulated by these chemical foods and they don't taste the sweetness in fruit, for example. If you go sugar-free for two weeks and then you eat an apple, it is extremely sweet. And so by not adding a sweetener to it, this is a great way to condition people's tongues to like really enjoy the sweet potato. If you want to make it more creamy, use coconut, uh, full fat coconut cream instead of dairy. Um, I just feel, I feel much better with dairy. Some people do okay with dairy, but I don't add it to my food anymore. You can totally add pecans, walnuts, almonds. You can add nuts. Um, you can add nuts to it as well, for sure. So what kind of fat? Coconut oil or grass fed butter or ghee are great. Yes, you could add cinnamon. Be careful with the cinnamon because you don't want it to become cinnamon potatoes. Love the blue blockers. Thank you. Okay, what other questions we got? Supplements for athlete recovery. Wait, I got you covered. Be right back. This is the absolute best. This is the number one supplement for athletic recovery. It is oxygen. It is concentrated oxygen. So regular, um, regular atmosphere is 20% oxygen, 80% nitrogen. This is 95% oxygen. So this is like five breaths of oxygen. Breathing this after workout increases my recovery. So I usually, I used to get brain fog after exercise, especially hard exercise, because my muscles are trying to recover and they're consuming a ton of oxygen and a ton of blood and a ton of nutrients to try to uh, repair themselves. This left my brain wanting energy. When I take this after exercise, it gives my body just a bunch of oxygen, which allows my muscles to repair themselves and gives my brain oxygen as well. So this is my absolute favorite, favorite muscle recovery, exercise recovery supplement. No joke. Next, I would recommend BCAAs, branch chain amino acids. That gets a protein to your, to your muscles to help them rebuild. You can't see it. It's called Boost Oxygen, B-O-O-S-T, Boost Oxygen. I'm not sponsored by them, um, but they're great. And um, right, creatine. So creatine is great for the brain. What creatine does, oh, you can you can buy this online. You can buy it from boost.com. You can also buy it on, um, on eBay or on Amazon. It's terrific. It's like 20 bucks a can. In Colorado, you could buy it at the um, at the grocery store. They're, they're great. I recommend, if you're serious, go to boostoxygen.com, order a case. They're so very, very good. They're just amazing. How many hits do you get? I was using this two to three times a day, and this would last me two weeks. So a lot. It, it lasts a long time. So if this is 20 bucks, it lasts me two weeks. So 14 days. So two bucks a day. Totally. Would you pay two bucks a day to feel significantly better, not get brain fog? Totally. Right. A friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, his mother was, was a lifetime smoker. And, um, and he sent her this the next week on the phone, next one or two weeks, she stopped coughing on the phone. And then she, um, then she quit smoking soon thereafter. I'm not saying this helps you quit smoking, but this gave her a, a shot of, of oxygen and she stopped coughing. It's very cool. Okay, then creatine and BCAAs. Creatine increases the amount of phosphate available in the, in the mitochondria for ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. When you use it to make energy in the electron transport chain, it goes down to ADP, adenosine diphosphate. So it loses a phosphate group. Creatine makes a phosphate group available, which makes it easier to make energy. Research shows that people who um, take creatine, they persist longer at mental tasks. So they have more more brain energy and more willpower, and they're able to exercise harder and they have better recovery. So it's really, really, really good. So I definitely recommend creatine. What are we using it for and how much is safe? So creatine, five grams a day is the recommended dose. There's a way to do it. You want to, you want to preload, please read an article about creatine. You want to make sure you're drinking enough water with creatine because it can be hard on the kidneys otherwise. So you might want to check with your medical professional. Anything I say, check with your medical professional. I'm not a medical professional. I'm a neuroscientist. I'm just sharing the data with you. This is boost oxygen. This is extremely safe. Take one and two breaths at a time. 
I gave this to my my brother. And I didn't give him instructions to give people instructions. He just handed this to a girl. She just started huffing it and she got super oxygenated and she started to have a panic attack. That's no bueno. So take one deep breath and hold it and then breathe it out and then take another deep breath and hold it. See how that works, right? Don't take too much of this. Don't just like, just like breathe it in and out. You want to hold it. It's super, it's super rich in oxygen. I'm sure you can, I, I don't want to do this on camera. That might look a little strange. Um, you know, if they are AI reviewing this video, they're like, oh my gosh, he's doing whippets. I'm not doing whippets. I don't recommend whippets. Whippets are like the opposite. They like deprive your oxygen, your brain of oxygen. Okay. It is not bad for a person's lungs. It's terrific for a person's lungs. Okay, what else we got here? Do I recommend turmeric daily? I recommend curcumin daily. Curcumin, so turmeric is 5% curcumin, which means curcumin is nine is um, 20 times more powerful, more concentrated than turmeric. The good research on Alzheimer's disease and reducing amyloid plaque in the brain and reducing inflammation, it's done with curcumin. So I recommend curcumin over turmeric and make sure it has black pepper in it if you take it as a supplement, which is the way to do it. Um, it can help people stop smoking. I mean, frankly, so many things can help people stop smoking if it's just a healthy behavior, right? So if someone, um, if someone's used to eating sugar and you give them magnesium, magnesium, by the way, helps reduce addiction. Why? Because it reduces stress and anxiety and improves sleep. It's really hard to, to let go of the addictive drugs if you're not sleeping and you're stressed, right? So magnesium can help end addiction. If someone gives up sugar, does that make it more likely for them to quit smoking? I would say yes, because they're now on the path towards better health, right? Every step towards better health increases the likelihood of taking another step, right? So if someone stops eating Twinkies, is that going to make them less likely to stop smoking? I would say yes, right? So this is healthy. This done correctly is healthy. Is Could this help someone stop smoking? Absolutely. Um, a friend of mine, my, actually my former roommate, uh, he used to smoke cigarettes, or he does smoke cigarettes. He would roll his own cigarettes. He loved this. And he said, you know what they need to do? They need to make this in tobacco flavor. That's interesting, right? He said that the, the, the experience he felt was similar to an experience of nicotine. So imagine if you could breathe this and taste tobacco, smokers would absolutely love this. So this is a nice substitute for a cigarette. If someone feels the need for a cigarette, they can take one or two breaths and they'll feel pretty good. And if they can condition themselves to not need a cigarette every time they feel the craving, that can help them quit cigarettes. By the way, do you know what, who, who knows the number one um, way to stop smoking? I'll, I'll, I'll pause for just 20 seconds. Who knows the most powerful way to stop smoking, statistically speaking? And this is peer-reviewed data out of Johns Hopkins. Jim, you're, a, you're an interesting character. You put lots of smiley faces and you're talking about sniffing paint. Very interesting. Cold turkey. The painting in the back is Gaia by Min J. Lee, spelled M-I-N-J-A-E. Hypnosis, you're close. Call magnesium. Pregnancy. Uh, Joint beach lover, you might be right. I haven't seen the date on that. I bet that is. Somebody comes pregnant, real big incentive to stop smoking. Support from friends. The patch. Abstinence. No sex. That's got to that's make it worse. I'm just kidding. Cold turkey. Meditation. NRT. I don't know what NRT is. How to help someone with vaping. Listen up. We're, we're getting there. Just quit. Magnesium cure my sugar addiction. Awesome. Thank you. I read that and I've now met someone. Prickly, pink prickly pear blossom. What is your first name? I want to remember your first name because this is great. Edible mushrooms. You're really, really close. You're extremely close. Let me know your name. I love that magnesium helped you cure your sugar addiction. I quit when I got pregnant. Yeah, I bet that's really helpful. Thank you for that information, dear mama. Tapering off. I quit from pregnancy. Gum. Okay, here's the answer. You're going to love this. Psychedelics. There it is. Kate got it. Kate Doyle, roar to you. All right, so here's the data. This is out of Johns Hopkins, which is one of the top medical schools in the country. By the way, Tim Ferriss helped um, raise $8 million out of $16 million 
to create a psychedelic research institute at Johns Hopkins. I think that's what I heard on his podcast. I don't know if I have it exactly right. Something like that. So here's the data. People come in, people, smokers come into the office and meet with a therapist. They then say, we're, you're going to come back next time and you're going to take a psychedelic dose of mushrooms and we're going to have a therapy session and that's going to help. So people come in, get to know the therapist and the therapist explains what's going to happen during their next session. They leave, they come back, they take a psychedelic dose of mushrooms. I'm not sure what that is. I'm guessing something close to three grams of, of mushrooms. Don't quote me on that. I'm just guessing. And then this is enough for them to have a psychedelic experience. They then put an eye mask on. I don't have my eye mask here. So they put an eye mask on and they lay them on a couch and then the therapist is there and they talk to them and they help them through their trip. It's not a bad, if they have a bad trip, it helps them with it. Now, this is not for everyone. I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just giving you the research. So smokers go in and then they, they take, psych take psychedelic mushrooms with the therapist and the therapist is there with them for four to six hours. At the end of this session, the, sm the rate of smoking, excuse me, the rate of smoking cessation, which is stopping, is 80%. 80% of people, eight out of 10 people who go through this process quit smoking for the next six months. That's amazing. The next best treatment is Wellbutrin, which is, um, which, is, which is a pharmaceutical drug also prescribed for ADHD. That is a 40%, 40% success rate. This is 80%. Eight out of 10 people stop smoking for the next six months. That's amazing. So that's the best way to quit smoking, according to the research. And this is not legal in every state. In fact, it's not legal in most states. It just became not illegal. So it became decriminalized in Colorado. And I believe it's decriminalized in Washington and Oregon. Don't quote me on that. You have to search for that. I believe it's it's available for therapists to use this. There's a great question here. You, this is this is the question to ask. Um, can it help with sugar addiction? We don't know, Brandy. We don't know. I think that's a really interesting question. What if I don't know the answer to this? What if you can do this with someone who's addicted to sugar or gluten or 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 pick your thing? Um, if they go in, have a conversation with a therapist. They come back a week later, take psychedelics under therapeutic supervision, and then they quit. They quit. They quit. They quit, they quit alcohol. They quit. Um, they become less depressed. They quit sugar. Amazing, right? What if this can help people quit sugar and can help people not become diabetic anymore? Wouldn't that be amazing? I don't know if that's going to happen. It could. It could not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the data, but it's exciting because it's possible. This is what's possible. This is really, really interesting. So great question, Brandy. I think if it's, if that works, this could be a whole new opportunity to help people with weight loss and type 2 diabetes, right? If you're addicted to sugar, and I understand why. Sugar is extremely addictive. It's in so many different foods, and it's hidden in different foods. And uh, we're addicted to it physically. Our gut bacteria, if you eat a lot of sugar, your gut bacteria want it. Your brain wants it. Your brain associates it with energy. There's comfort associated with it. There's habit with it. It surrounds you. It's bright and colorful. There's all these things causing us to want sugar can, and continue to go back to it. And it's very, very dangerous. It's, it's dangerous long-term for sure. And it's emotionally destabilizing short-term. Who's ever had a bunch of sugar and lost your cool? Or who's ever seen a friend or family member eat a bunch of sugar and, and, and lose their cool and just start yelling or screaming and they lost it? Who, who's, who's seen that? Me, Don seen it. Yeah, dear mama, I I, I I appreciate your comment about breathing, breathing oxygen. So if you have COPD, um, please be careful. Please do your own research. What are we talking about? We are talking about the research on psychedelics helping end smoking cessation or helping end smoking. Yeah, so you, so a lot of us have seen, and some of us have seen people just lose their their cool over uh, over sugar. Um, I've seen I've seen parents de deny their children of sugar. We've definitely all seen this. A child wants sugar. Mother, father says, no, you can't have that. Child loses it. Why? Because they're addicted to it. Really, really problematic. It is definitely getting close to my bedtime, but I'm having so much fun with y'all. What else can we talk about? 
I suffer from too much sugar. Deb, I hear you. If you're just arriving, please put your first name, where you're from in the chat. If you make a comment, please put your first name in the chat. Please feel free to join us on YouTube. It's easier for me, me to read the comments there. And if you want to watch the earlier version, you can rewind on YouTube. This is going to be replayed on YouTube as soon as we finish here. Um, all right. Yeah, kiddos lose their stuff all the time. Exactly, Talbert girl. You are welcome. I quit drinking. Now I have intense sugar cravings. That's interesting, Alanis, because sugar and alcohol, the body treats them very similarly. So let me explain. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This came about in the 1980s. Before that, it was just fatty liver disease from alcohol. What is fatty liver disease? This is when your sugar level is high or your alcohol level is high and the, and the liver knows this is bad news and it stores that, that, fat, that, that alcohol or that sugar as fat. Your body basically processes alcohol and sugar the same way. And so if, you're, if your alcohol level is high, your blood alcohol level is high, or your sugar level is high, your, your liver can store that as fat. And so what's happening now in the United States is that children like 10, 12 years old are getting non-alcoholic fatty liver disease from, from mostly from sodas, I'm guessing, but just eat, chronically eating a ton of sugar and their liver is trying to protect the body from elevated sugar levels. And so it's, it stores that fat super quick and it stores it as visceral fat. Visceral fat means around the waist, specifically around the organs, organs and around the liver. This is really, really dangerous. And so our bodies chemically treat sugar and alcohol the same. It's something that must be processed by the liver and it's something that's taxing on the liver and both of them promote non-alcohol both of them promote fatty liver disease either from alcohol or from sugar and let's give alanis a big roar roar to you alanis congratulations on quitting drinking that is a big darn deal roar to you congratulations and it sounds like sugar is next on the plate if you can do alcohol you can do sugar and if you can quit alcohol and reduce or even quit sugar you can do anything you got this let's give some love to alanis here let's give some support to her that's great Chocolate or caffeine can make me angry. Well, then I recommend not eating those things. Sugar hangovers are the worst. Yeah, totally. Okay, a bunch of you just shot up. Jim Johnson, you're an interesting character. You were saying that I was crazy, and now you're commenting a lot. It's great to have you in here. Can you remove fluoride from the body? Um, I don't know what the fluoride um, cleansing process is you definitely don't want to drink it in the water. About 50% of the fluoride we consume stays in our body and becomes incorporated into our teeth, our bones, and our tissues. The other half gets excreted in our urine. I don't want any fluoride in my, fluoride's not a necessary nutrient for anything. And uh, mother's milk, this is great data for you. So the mother's, mother's body, when she's breastfeeding baby, the mother's body filters out 99.8% of the fluoride in the water or something like that. So if the mother's drinking city water that has fluoride added to it, it, the mother's body filters out most of that before it goes to the baby. Why? Because the mother's body has an intelligence that knows baby's not supposed to get fluoride. In fact, the blood-brain barrier is not fully formed until six months of age. So that means that fluoride could cross the blood-brain barrier and really hurt the baby. This is another reason why it's really important to advocate for an end to water fluoridation because mothers who don't have time to breastfeed or don't have the education to breastfeed or know how important breastfeeding is, they're putting their babies at danger by giving them tap water. Seriously, there's a lot of stuff in tap water that could cross the blood brain barrier and cause damage to these children. It's really unfair because these are children um, of mothers or of, of parents of low economic status, low education, primarily people of color. It's really not fair that, that the ba these babies are potentially harmed by the additives in tap water. It's really not. And so I highly recommend you become an advocate for your community for ending water fluoridation to help protect the babies, especially the babies of those um, of, of lower income and lower education. Is calm powder a good source of magnesium? I used to think so. My opinion is changing. It's magnesium citrate, which is not the best source of magnesium. It can help promote um, going to the bathroom. It can help promote pooping. Um, it's less good for you, but some people report it, it works really well. So I would say try it and see how you feel. Um, it's probably not bad for you, um, but I've taken it and it's, it's, it's been upsetting to my stomach and it's, it's prevented me from sleep. Some people feel great about it. Mary, Marianne, thank you for using your, your name, Marianne. Did you say quit vaping? I did not say quit vaping, or at least 
know, if I did, it was a little while ago. I would say the same way you would quit smoking. Um, a nicotine patch can be helpful. Nicotine lozenges can be helpful. Nicotine gum can be helpful. I've done the nicotine spray. It really hurts my throat. I don't recommend that. Exercise, magnesium. Someone just mentioned how magnesium, it was, it was prickly pear, uh, how she was able to quit sugar by eat, taking magnesium. Magnesium helps with addiction. I forget what paper I read. It talked about how, how magnesium supplementation helped people quit heroin. Like it really helps with addiction. So that could be helpful. Also remove, also don't be in an environment where people are vaping. It's hard not to smoke cigarettes when all your friends are smokers. It's hard not to drink when you hang out at bars, right? I mean, that's really difficult. It's hard not to drink when everyone around you is drinking. So, so find a really healthy group of people who aren't vaping. I would change your environment so you're, you're not around vapors and take more magnesium, get more exercise, and um, spend more time with healthy, um, healthy people. You just got diagnosed with lupus. So Cecilia, under my... Um, profile is a link. Under that link is um, an appoint a way to book an appointment with Dr. Shannon, S-H-A-N-N-Y-N. -N -N. Dr. Shannon is a functional medicine doctor. She talks about um, ways of helping lupus, autoimmune diseases, and even MS. I would schedule an appointment with her team. You can see the, the appointment's free and they basically just they, they try to help you. And then if you want to work with them, you know, they'll, they'll work with you, but schedule a session with her and get some free information. She's great. We filled up, she was on, was she on this week or last? I think it was last week. We filled up her calendar like this. She's great at women's health. I would check with her. So Cecilia, does that make sense? The link tree below my profile, you're going to, and then, and then the Dr. Shannon link is somewhere in there. By the way, if you want to know my favorite supplements for helping protect the brain and reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease, I put together a great report, my top 10 supplements. You can download it for free. A lot of people have asked this past week, what supplements do I take? You know, what brands do I take? Where do you buy them? I put all of that in this free report and you can get it. It's below my profile. Click the link below my profile and then click top 10 supplements. It'll take you to a page, just enter your name and email, and I will email you a copy of it and then send it to people, send it to your friends, send it to your family, send it to other health conscious people. You have my permission to share the document. Please get the word out. It's really important information. And that will save you a ton of research time because I tell you what supplements I buy, what brands I buy and where to buy them. And if you are concerned about Alzheimer's disease, I have a great masterclass. It's 45 minutes long that I put together that has some of the, the most cutting edge science on how to prevent Alzheimer's disease and things you can do to, um, to potentially slow down or stop the progress of Alzheimer's disease. And I put it in this free masterclass. You can access that below my link as well. Um, it's just free masterclass. Again, go there and then put your name and email in there and then I'll send you a link so you can watch it. And then I'll even send you a link so you can watch it again if you, if you close it down. Um, Really, really great stuff. And then if you want, if you if you want to work with me privately, or if you're concerned that you have memory loss, you can schedule a free memory test below the masterclass. I want you to watch the masterclass first because it's got a great education and that might be enough for you to get started. And if you watch the masterclass and you still say, Hey, I need the memory test, or I want to work, want to work, you want to work with me, you can sign up for a free memory test there. All of that is below my profile and all of that is free. All right. Does that make sense, Cecilia? Which magnesium? Uh, the, the research that I read did not specify. I would start with magnesium glycinate. We're talking about magnesium to help end addiction or help with addiction. I would say most magnesium is probably helpful. I would start with magnesium glycinate. That's the most bioavailable. And then potentially magnesium threonate. Magnesium threonate is small enough to cross the blood brain barrier. And by the way, some of the initial research on Alzheimer's disease looked at uh, Alzheimer's brains and did dissections. And what they found was that Alzheimer's brains had a deficit of magnesium or a deficiency in magnesium. So some of the early theories were, this is from the 80s, that, mag that a deficiency in magnesium contributed to Alzheimer's disease. We don't know if that's true. People don't really talk about that. I don't know why. Maybe it's not as interesting as you know, the amyloid plaque. And now we're talking about acetylcholine and choline deficiency, how that relates to Alzheimer's disease. But really, I mean, magnesium is such a fundamental, important mineral. It's involved in over 300 enzymatic processes in your body. 
and about 40 to 70 percent of Americans are deficient in it. Is it possible that a magnesium deficiency is contributing to Alzheimer's disease? It's absolutely possible. No one's researching this anymore, to my knowledge. And it's a really good idea to make sure you're getting enough magnesium, even outside of Alzheimer's disease, for healthy energy levels, for your immune system, for your sleep, for stress and relaxation. Yeah, I would stay away from magnesium oxide, magnesium glycinate, magnesium threonate. I'd start with there. Word recall is part of memory loss. Red, red taffy tape petticoat. <laughs> Please put your first name when you make a comment. It makes it so much easier for me to respond to you because I got red taffy tape petticoat. Um, so memory loss and word word recall is part of, of memory loss, right? So there's episodic memories, which is what happened, right? And then there's then there's declarative memories, which is where we're actually accessing specific facts. So something you can declare. So George Washington was president of the United States. That's a declarative memory. And then there's also um, there's also motor memories. So the ability to ride a bike, the, real, the ability to tie your shoe, the ability to play a piano. So you'll find someone, there's actually a very interesting memory case of someone who has basically total amnesia. He remembers his name, he remembers his wife, but he can't make new memories. So his hippocampus is very damaged. He can't make new memories, but he can sit and play the piano. He remembers how to play the piano. He also remembers how to walk and how to talk. So he's got procedural memory, how to do things with his physical body, but he's lost the ability to make new memories. You are welcome, be kind. How do I open the masterclass? So click the link, go to, um, and then fill in your information, your name, your email, and then that will take you to the page where the masterclass is. Pam, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are so welcome and thank you for using your name. Yeah, blue blockers are great. You are welcome, Aura. Dear, dear mama, my favorite magnesium is biglycinate. I haven't seen biglycinate. Do I know the cost of Berkey filters? Kim, so the cost of Berkey filters. I haven't bought a Berkey in a while. Berkey is my favorite fluoride uh, filter. And someone on the live, on the lion's den, recently told me that Berkey is under lawsuit, which is really strange to me because I like Berkey. I've used them since I was a student, a grad student in Austin, Texas. This would have been 2009, 2007. So this is 12 years ago. I've been using Berkey filters. They're great. And so some people are saying they're not making good, um, good claims. So I don't know, but I, I, historically I've used Berkey and I've really liked them. I've gotten good results with them. Uh, Berkey is a great fluoride filter. You can also get reverse osmosis filters. Those waste more water or use more water and they're more expensive. And then you have to add minerals to your water if you use reverse osmosis because it takes out all the minerals. Maggie from Oregon. My mom was diagnosed at 55 with dementia and passed at 60. I'm so scared for my future. Maggie, I'm sorry to hear about your mom. That sounds really difficult. One of the reasons I got in, in fact, one of the primary reasons I got into the work that I'm doing right now is to protect my parents. I, two of my grandparents had Alzheimer's disease. Or excuse me, two of them had dementia. And I'm worried about my parents. And so this was three years ago. And so I said, hey, I, I need to get into this. And so for the last three years, this has been my focus and my expertise. And, um, and so I became concerned about my parents. So it's very rational for you to be concerned. And the good news is you are in the right place. There are many things that you can do to reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease. Medically, many scientifically verified things from peer-reviewed research, from double-blind placebo-controlled studies, from epidemiological studies, a ton of science that says that you, yes, you can do things to reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease and live a long, healthy life. Really great news, Maggie. It's a great time to be alive. 10 years ago, I couldn't say that statement with as much authority. 20, 30 years ago, that was blasphemy, right? 20, 30 years ago, Alzheimer's was all genetic. 10 years ago, we were starting to get data that there's things you can do. Now it's very clear, right? Diabetes. If you can reduce your risk of diabetes, you can do, reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is often called type 3 diabetes. Diabetes greatly increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease. I don't know to what number. Let me look that up. How much? If I need a number, how much does diabetes increase the risk of Alzheimer's? 
I'm guessing at least 30, probably closer to 40. This one doesn't give a percentage. Wow. Type 1 diabetics were 93% more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. That's crazy. I didn't know that. This is alzheimers.org that I'm looking at. I don't know if they're going to have a simple, simple answer for type 2 diabetes. So 93% for type 1 diabetes. I didn't know that there was that risk for type 1 diabetes. So significantly. So if you can reduce your risk of diabetes, that can reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. That's a really damn big deal. That's one thing you can do. It's a great place to start. A lot of people who um, diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease today, a lot of them have diabetes or pre-diabetes. That means your hemoglobin A1C levels, which is a fancy way for testing for diabetes, basically um, it, it's a test you get in your blood. And any number above five and a half percent, I believe, is pre-diabetes. Over six percent is diabetic. Basically, you want to be closer to five or under. Someone a couple nights ago mentioned that she was twelve. That's that's a huge number. That's a very diabetic. It's very dangerous diabetic. And through weight loss, she got it down to six or seven. Amazing, right? So a great way to reduce the risk of diabetes is to lose weight. Another way is to go on the low carb diet. By the way, if you want to lose weight and you're committed to keeping the weight off, there's a free gift for you in my profile. Um, it's the first link, and it's a free weight loss roadmap with Chad Tackett. Now, this is not an easy button. This is not a, um, a pill that, that makes you burn fat. If I had that, I would offer it to you. I'd say, hey, this pill burns fat. Buy it. This is not this. This is cleaning up your diet. This is improving your exercise. This is reducing your stress. This is improving your sleep. This is getting accountability and doing the things that are proven to lose weight and keep them off. If that sounds of interest to you, click the link below my profile. It says free weight loss roadmap blueprint. You, you can get a free call where, with, a, with a weight loss coach, a certified weight loss coach, who's going to help you plan a ro roadmap for your personal weight loss success and then if you want accountability and further support, you can get that. There's only a few spots. There was 16 spots at the beginning of the week. I'm guessing there's eight or fewer left. I don't know if there's any spots left. But Chad Tackett is one of the world's leading experts in weight loss and sustainable weight loss. And so if you want to uh, make, make progress, if you're one of the 70% of Americans who are overweight or obese, 7-0, 70 70% of Americans are overweight or obese, that increases the risk of diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. If you're committed to doing something about that and taking sustainable action, um, schedule a free call with a certified weight loss coach, get your free weight loss roadmap blueprint and get started. Seriously. All right. What good supplement for improving kids learning? The answer is exercise. Seriously, exercise saved me at school. I was in third grade, I think, and I had ADHD. I still do have ADHD. I was struggling in school and my parents were confused. They're like, he's smart, but why, are, why do his grades suck? Why do his teachers hate him? I was a troublemaker because I was asked to sit still all day. When I started playing more organized sports, my grades significantly improved. That was also the time I, I started taking Ritalin. So the drugs helped as well. But what got me through high school and college, I played lacrosse in college, was the daily regular exercise. It makes such a big difference. So if you want your children to learn better, I would start with exercise. I would get a prescription. And so I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm not telling you what to do for children. Here's what I would do if I had a child with ADHD. I would get them diagnosed. I would get a script from the doctor and say, doctor, please write Robert Jr. Or I'm, I'm Jr. Robert III or little Maggie or little Susie or little Lisa has permission to leave the classroom every hour to go outside and run for 10 minutes. Write that down. I'm going to give that to all teachers. I'm going to call the teachers. Hey, my child is allowed to leave your classroom every hour to go run outside for their ADHD. Okay? And please encourage them to go. They'll be much better behaved. That would make a huge difference. Seriously. Children in general are supposed to be outside playing. So making them be inside is just silly, especially inside a desk where they're sitting. Children aren't meant to sit. They're meant to play and enjoy and explore their bodies explore what it means to move outside on a jungle gym and play in trees and walk on the grass, right? They're not meant to be inside under artificial lights. 
So outside, really helpful. Exercise, really helpful. Exercise also helps grow a healthy brain. In adults who exercise, this is this is great research from Kirk Erickson, I believe it was. I think it was from 2011. He took uh, seniors. Half of them did stretching a couple times a week. Half of them did cardiovascular exercise. They did brain scans. I think it was a six-month study. At the end of six months, the group that did the exercise had bigger brains, specifically in the hippocampus. Exercise helped them grow bigger brains. So if you want your children to go grow big brains, get them exercise and get them sleep. And I would not give my children phones. Seriously, phones are, they are problematic, right? Phones are access to information you don't want them to have. Phones are access to pornography. They're access to um, inappropriate things. They're access to dopamine, right? Uh, phones are significantly addictive because of dopamine. If you don't believe me, watch the documentary, The Social Dilemma. In this documentary, you have uh, C-level executives from Twitter saying, I had no idea how addictive Twitter was. I would go at work. I'd be at work and work at Twitter all day. Then I'd come home and I'd be on my phone. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm addicted to this thing. And then he thought, oh my gosh, I can't let my kids get this. If I'm addicted as an adult, what's it doing to kids? And that's absolutely right. You had really high level insiders coming out and saying, hey, this is dangerous. We got to stop this. We got to we got to turn off Facebook. We got to turn off Twitter. We got to turn off Instagram. We got to turn off Snapchat. This is bad. Especially these things were really damaging for um, for for young girls. It was hurting their their self image. It was it was increasing bullying opportunities. Really bad stuff. And then this the the dopamine hit of a of a text message. You know. We're not supposed to get dopamine hits from text messages. We as human beings are designed to get dopamine hits from seeking, um, from going towards a goal and then achieving that goal or making progress towards that goal or doing something um, that's helpful for our community, right? So we're supposed to get a dopamine hit grabbing a spear and going to, you know, go hunt, right? Or going to go gather berries or doing something helpful for our community or for ourselves today, you know, we can get dopamine hits for doing something productive or helpful, not for receiving text messages. It's really bad. And so what we're going to see, my guess, in the next in the next 15 years, as children today become adults, we're going to see how messed up their dopamine is from having access to phones, specifically text messages, social media, and pornography. And I equate all of those because those are all becoming addictive. I mean, I, I feel this. Um, I'm a little reluctant to say this. I feel this checking TikTok. When I post a bunch of videos on TikTok, I want to constantly check them, see how they're doing. I want to respond to messages. I, I like I like to respond to uh, to messages or or comments people make on TikTok, especially at the beginning, because I want to answer those questions. And I find that I'm constantly checking, and then I get these dopamine hits with, "Oh, I got more views," and "Oh, I got more comments," and "Oh my gosh, don't I feel so good?" I don't want dopamine hits checking my phone. I want dopamine hits doing something valuable and positive. And so I, I now need to train myself to not check my phone during the day to make content, and then to be okay, however many views it gets, and then answer questions when I answer questions, and then put it down. I don't want my dopamine and my mental health and my emotions being determined upon how many views I get on TikTok. And I'm relatively successful at this. Imagine if someone is posting a bunch of things on Facebook and they're getting no views or they're getting a bunch of negative reviews or their friends are saying, gosh, you look ugly in that dress. That's got to be so painful. And it's got to be so hard, especially on a, on a young girl who might have body image issues. Goodness gracious. And so I, if I had children and I plan on having children, if I had children, I would not give them a phone. I would not give them access to social media. I certainly wouldn't give them any access to pornography. I think that's very, very dangerous. And I am a First Amendment advocate. I think pornography should be legal and it's freedom of expression for adults. But we don't keep children from pornography like we do from alcohol. We don't allow any child to walk into an alcohol store in the United States and buy alcohol. Ain't happening, right? Big, big problems. But we allow software to exist that allows children to access pornography no problem. That's a problem. It's really, really bad. And so I think this is very dangerous that we allow children to have access to these addictive things that are messing with their neurotransmitters, specifically dopamine and the reward system. It's, these phones are very unnatural and it makes it hard to sit still and pay attention in a classroom when we have these super stimulating devices, these phones in our hands. All right. Any questions about why phones are so bad for children? 
and why I wouldn't adults too. I agree, Stanel. I mean, I try to, I, I turn my phone off when I work because I'll get phone calls and text messages and alerts. You know, Facebook, they want to update you every time someone likes a picture. Goodness gracious. It's like, do I have anything else in my life to do aside from get my Facebook updates? Holy crap. Like that's so much. It is addictive. I agree, Lichtenstein girl. Thank you, Karina. I try to be honest. I try to do my best. We could be addicted to TikTok. By the way, I want to acknowledge you. It is, what time is it? It's 11.48, the day before Thanksgiving. We'll stay on until Thanksgiving. That'll be fun. Then we can do a gratitude circle. That'd be super great. You're here talking about neuroscience, talking about health, talking about supplements, talking about preventing Alzheimer's disease, talking about how to be a better parent, talking about ADHD, and talking about how to live a healthier life. This is awesome. You could be checking your text message. You could be watching pornography. You could be watching you know, trash TV that doesn't help you. You could be doing all kinds of things. You could be just checking your social media repeatedly, but you're here and you're learning and that's awesome. And I salute you and I love you. I love you and I respect you and I'm honored, honored that you're here in the lion's den supporting each other and then asking great questions and staying engaged. This is really awesome. Roar, yes, roar to all of you. I love you too, Vegas Blue. What's my stance on parsley? I like it. I didn't know there was a stance to take on parsley. Thank you, Laura. You're so welcome, Stanel. You're welcome, Fribs. Hi, JJ. JJ was the one who's addicted to sugar. Did you did you quit? Who who quit sugar? It was it was uh so 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 JJ, try some magnesium. Thank you, Determined Zone. Where's the weight loss info? So Robin, um, on YouTube, I, I've talked about weight loss pretty substantially this live. We've been on for two hours now. I would I would go to YouTube and rewind and watch that. I, I did it really well. If I try to do it again, it's not going to be as good. But there's a ton of weight loss info earlier. I would check that out. Oh, the, if you want to schedule a free weight loss blueprint uh, session, a, weight, a free weight loss roadmap, that's with Chad Tackett. That's under my profile. So below my profile is a link tree with a bunch of free stuff. Um, Chad Tackett's the first one. You can, If you're serious about sustainable weight loss and you're willing to quit the sugar or reduce the sugar and get more exercise and improve your sleep, if you're willing to do the things necessary, you can schedule a free session with Chad Tackett and his team. That is below my profile. It's the link there. and It's the Chad Tackett free, um, free weight loss roadmap. And if you want to know what supplements I take, you can get that there. Um, and you can also sign up for the free masterclass on, on how to prevent Alzheimer's disease. Lots of free things for you below my profile. Uh, the the Huberzine study is, is closed as of right now. Uh, today was the first official day. And so we might do, we'll do another wave of that in a month or two. But uh, don't, don't fill out the Huberzine application. That's all done. You need to be an adult with critical thinking to use social media. Kids don't have that yet. Totally. And I, I would almost say uh, for Aver's journey that most adults aren't able to do it because we're emotionally into it, right? Our neurotransmitters are getting jacked up with social media. And so it's not like we're making a rational choice. I'm going to be on TikTok for five minutes. Ain't like that. It's more like I'm going to look at something on TikTok and then you're on there for, for an hour and you thought, think, oh my gosh, what happened? Or Facebook, just scrolling on Facebook. I remember this was years ago. Um, my, my girlfriend had trouble sleeping and I went, I, I and then I, I came outside. It was like 3 a.m. And she was out on the couch. I came outside the bedroom. She's on the couch. She's scrolling through Facebook. She said, I think I have insomnia. I said, I think you're on Facebook at night and that's keeping you awake. She's like, oh yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's just, it just, it just occupies the brain. It's designed by very, very smart people. And it's designed by very smart people to keep us stimulated and keep us involved. The algorithm is just brilliant and it's not fair. We are not, um, most human beings, adults, children do not have the capacity to beat the algorithm. I don't have the capacity to beat the algorithm. I just don't play. I just turn it off because if you put me in front of there, I, it's totally easy for me to be scrolling through Facebook or TikTok. They know what I like and they'll put stuff that I like. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just watching all the stuff they like. Isn't this great? Well, that's not what I want to do with my day. So I just don't play right? It's just like Vegas. How do you beat Vegas? You don't play. I've tried, I lived in Vegas. I tried to beat Vegas. I tried to count cards. 
I tried to play poker. I thought I was playing smart. Maybe I wasn't playing horribly. Maybe I was playing with decent theory. I would lose most of the time. Specifically with blackjack, I'm supposed to lose. That's how the math works out. Same thing with if I encounter, if, if I face off with Facebook, you know, can I be on here for five minutes and, and pull myself away? I'm likely to lose that because Facebook has a ton of smart people and an algorithm designed to suck me in and keep me in. So the best way to win against social media is to not play, which means um, set limits. And so on TikTok, I do my best to post content and then I'll, I'll look at a few things and then I try, I try to get off there. I really try to post content, answer questions. I try to use this as a content creation platform. That's what I do. And then I love being here on here with you. This is one of the most wonderful parts of my day is being on here uh, on the live with you. I really love this. I really do. And so, um, and so that's what I do with TikTok. With Facebook, I, I try to message people. I try not to scroll. And so whatever you need to do to get your social media under control, your social media checking under control, really good idea. Okay. Jim, I, some people said that you're being rude, or at least one person said you're being rude. Please be respectful of each other. Truck drivers are fat. Well... 70% of Americans are fat, so I guess 70% of truck drivers are likely to be fat. But please be polite with each other. This is the lion's den. This is, so th for those of you who are new or aren't aware, this is the lion's den. This is where we come to support each other. We are evolving lions here. That means we are trying to get better ourselves. We are evolving. We're trying to get better in the future. We look to our evolutionary past to inform our diet. And we like lion's mane, and we love and support each other. And so if, that, if you're down for that, give me a roar. Seriously, if you're down for the lion's mane, in our mission and what we're up to, give me a roar. If you're not into that, if you're not into being supportive and, and helping each other and loving each other and, and learning, then this probably is not a good place for you. And um, if you're into those things, please stay. Can lion's mane help you lose weight? That's a great question. All right, we're getting some roars here. Um, lion's mane can help you sleep better and that alone can help with, with weight loss. Lots of roars. Love it. All right. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Five minutes until Thanksgiving on the Eastern time. At Thanksgiving, when that hits, I'm going to ask you what you're grateful for and something you're working on and something, something you're going to share tomorrow with your friends, family, or whatever gathering. What is a lion? A lion is an animal with a really cool mane and goes roar, roar. And um, lion's mane is a supplement made from the mushroom lion's mane that's really good for the brain. And so identifying as evolving lions is a way of embodying the really cool animal, the lion, and incorporating lion's mane. Make sense, Luz Marie? Concussion support. I can answer that one. So concussion support. So traumatic brain injury. So give your brain the materials it needs to repair and regrow. What does this mean? If you've been watching, for a while, you know what I'm talking about. First of all, you want healthy fats. This means a uh, it means fish oil. Number one, you need healthy fish oil and eat healthy fish. The smash fish. If you know them, say them with me. Salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. One more time. Salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. You want wild caught salmon, and you want Atlantic mackerel, not king mackerel. Those provide a lot of healthy fats, omega threes that are great for the brain. Anthropologists who study diet. They believe that we grew a bigger brain when we started hunting more meat. There's omega-3s in meat, and that healthy fat allowed us to grow a bigger brain. So if you have traumatic brain injury, that means your brain needs to heal itself. Outside of water, your brain is primarily fat. And so the way to address this is to eat, is to eat healthy fish, the smash fish, and to take fish oil with a B-complex vitamin. If you take fish oil, pair it with a B-complex vitamin, all kinds of reasons to do this. B-complex vitamins are involved in making neurotransmitters. And when you take a B-complex vitamin and fish oil, that reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease by approximately 30%. And this is based on research from Dr. David Smith at Oxford. So start with those two. Get lots of sleep because your brain needs to repair itself. Quercetin is great. And I would recommend aniracetam or oxyracetam. There's very good data to show that aniracetam and oxyracetam help recover memory after traumatic brain injury, meaning they help heal the brain and help the brain put those memories back after traumatic brain injury. They can also prevent 
memory loss from traumatic brain injury. So they'll do, they'll do these in animals. And so they'll, they'll have mice and they'll give the mice aniracetam and then they'll give them a concussion or they'll give them an anesthetic, like it's called scopolamine, or they'll do so, or they'll give them a shock. They'll do something to mess with their memory. And then they'll see if they remember the maze afterwards. Those that got aniracetam or oxyracetam are much more likely to retain those memories. So it helps prevent memory loss from these different assaults to the brain. So a really, really good idea to get those. Those are great things for concussion support. Okay, Meg? All right. Heard that my epilepsy will make me six times more likely to get Alzheimer's disease. I don't know about that. Let's look that up. Epilepsy increases Alzheimer's disease. Uh, a, a study of 675 patients with epilepsy, age match control, showed that individuals with epilepsy are, are at increased risk for Alzheimer's disease. It doesn't, AD, 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 Alzheimer's disease is a clear risk factor for seizures. So they go together. The, the increased risk is age dependent. The higher the risk, with higher risk at younger ages, increasing dementia severity is. So likely, yes. I don't know about six times death juice. What's important is that there are things you can do to treat epilepsy and treat uh, and reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease. I would do both. If I had epilepsy, I would treat my epilepsy and do things that help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. I'll give you a couple of them according to the research. First, a ketogenic diet. There is a documentary, I think it's called just fat. And then there's another one, fat fiction. So in epilepsy, this has been done for the last I think, at least 60 years. It might be 90 years. They found that when they put children, epileptic children, on a high-fat diet that's ketogenic, one-third got better, one-third got completely better, and one-third was no result. So two-thirds of children showed a great benefit to being on the ketogenic diet and reducing their epilepsy. That's great. So that might be a really good idea. So going low carb, trying the ketogenic diet, that can be very, very helpful in managing your epilepsy simply with diet. Roar to you, Julie. All right. It is now, it just turned 12 o'clock. It is now officially Thanksgiving here on the Eastern Coast. Big roar to you. This has been so great being here with you. Let's share something that you are grateful for. Um, if there's a better way to say this, I'd love some comments. So not just what you're grateful for. I want something deeper than that. Something that's really emotionally, um, moving. Um, thank you for that wacky Jackie. Um, what can we ask? Well, thank you, Meg. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm really grateful for y'all. So this, so TikTok was new, is new to me. I didn't join until the summer. So something like. This is like two months before. I joined about May, May or June. And so this is my first couple months on TikTok, maybe six months. This has been amazing. And now we have this great community of people. I mean, I love you. I really do. I love spending my time with you. Um, I, I love sharing information with you. I love these discussions with you. This is just wonderful. This is the highlight of my day. I love making information and content that's helpful to you. And I love hearing your stories. People who are eating more sardines and doing more exercise and feeling better, people losing weight and getting healthier, people who's, who's you know, you're giving your, your mother who's got dementia, you're giving her, um, you're giving her supplements and MCT oil and you're noticing a difference. These things really, they're really wonderful. They, they, make, they, they help me feel like I'm making a difference and that feels really good. So I just, I love this so much. So I'm very grateful for this. It, like however much gratitude you feel, so all 256 of you, I, I feel that magnified. It's just, it's just amazing. And so what do we want to put in the chat here? I want to ask something, you know, what, what do you, um, something to the effect of what are you grateful for and what are you going to do with it? So I, I want something like something about a commitment of doing something positive in the future, because I want to create this big ball of energy. By the way, if you look at, 
energy cycles. There's a lot of energy around these holidays because we're getting together friends and family and we're breaking bread with them. And we're saying, I love you to people. And we're sitting, we're sitting around a table saying a lot of us, I would guess about half of us are going to share what we're grateful for with our families tomorrow, if not 90% of us. I think that's, that's pretty common that we'll sit around a Thanksgiving table and, and just say, everyone say something you're grateful for, or just share that in a conversation. And so there's a lot of energy behind this. And when the human, when, when this, when this entire country shares in this collective vision of gratitude, something's really powerful here. And so I want to harness this opportunity. And I, I think, and I'm open to suggestions on this. What do we want to do? Is it something about how to, thank you, Robin. That's such a nice comment. I'm trying to help humanity. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help, help you as individuals. And hopefully that helps humanity. Let's say, let's say something you're grateful for, and then maybe something you want to create in the world or contribute to the world or something you're going to do. So it, this could be for you personally. So you could say, I'm grateful for my health. And something I want to do this next year is I want to lose 20 pounds. Or I'm grateful for my family. And something I want, I want, to, and something, um, that I want to create is I want to create um, you know, a garden in my backyard. Or something I want to do for my community is I want to do a community walk every Saturday where a bunch of us can just get together and walk around the neighborhood to get to know each other and to um, and to exercise. So I want you to share something you're grateful for and something you're going to do for yourself, for your family, or for your community. Does that make sense? Is that good? Give, give me a roar if that makes sense. I, I, I know we spent the last five minutes trying to figure this out. So something you're grateful for in your life and something you are going to do this next year for yourself or your family or your community. Does that make sense? Give me a roar if that makes sense. All right. So Sundays says it's yes. All right. So all right, we're from Racky Jackie. Okay. We're gonna, I'm going to start reading now. Please put your stuff in the chat and please put your first name. That way I can read it. And then YouTube. Does that make sense? Is anyone out there still playing? All right. So here we go. So one from Coco. I'm grateful for my health. All right. And then feel free to send, send loving comments and send hearts to these people. I want to walk more often and invite my daughters to enjoy, to, to enjoy me as well. Awesome. Big roar to you, Coco. That's wonderful. All right. Uh, Kate, I'm grateful to be a hypnotherapist and I will create more free content that will help people. Awesome. Roar to you, Kate. Wow. I felt that right here. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so excited for that. All right, I'm concerned if I skip, I'm going to lose something. Okay, Sean, roar. Roar to you, Sean. Shirley, lower stress in the future. Awesome. And what are you grateful for, Shirley? Let's express a gratitude and what you're going to create. All right, Cat Mac D. I'm grateful for my ice plunging fam and fam family of friends. Game changer for mental health. Awesome. That's great. Ice plunging is totally the thing. All right, Karina. Karina, I'm spending Thanksgiving with my 95-year-old grandma who has dementia, and I love being here. Awesome. <laughs> Terrific, Karina. 95. That's amazing. It's quite a life. All right, we got a heart from Sundays. All right, so I'm not answering questions right now, Drew. If you want to play, that'd be great. And your, your name's... You have line in your name. So, so let's play. So, Handy, I'm not answering questions right now. All right. User 9833. I'm, oh, Dana, you put your name. Thank you, Dana. Dana, I'm grateful for my daughter for helping me quit drinking. Awesome. <laughs> Amen. Alleluia. That's fantastic. Dear Mama, chronic illness has been a blessing in disguise. Now I see how there is no light without darkness. Wow. That is very profound. Blessings to you. All right, Jim Johnson, we are not doing politics right now. This is not a good place for political discussion. Bonds. Tristan, grateful to have options to try and prevent dementia. Awesome. I'm grateful to have that too. What are you committed to? What are you, you going to do? Are you going to eat more smash fish? Are you going to do more exercise? going to improve your sleep? What are you up to? Phoenix. Grateful for you. Oh, thank you. Truly, I will reverse my type 2 diabetes. Yes. All right. Big roar to Phoenix. Yes, you are going to reverse your type 2 diabetes in 2023. Absolutely. 
Let's start right now. Start today. You know, Thanksgiving dinner, maybe don't eat the mashed potatoes. Maybe just eat more turkey and, um, you know, have and bring some dark chocolate, right? Bring some, do I have it here? Where'd it go? Bring some of the, the healthy chocolates. I totally have chocolate here. I got some of the wrapper. So bring, you know, bring a dessert that you can eat. Start right now, Phoenix. I mean, imagine the momentum you're going to have if you skip on the carbs during Thanksgiving and you instead eat the turkey, eat the green beans, eat lots of vegetables, and then have some, and then have some healthy chocolate. Wouldn't that be great? You can do this. We are here for you and I'm here for you. Awesome, Phoenix. I want, I want updates on this. Nicole. Hi, Robert. I'm grateful for finding you so I can prevent dementia because my dad has it. I'm sorry to hear about your dad and I'm glad you're here too. And your dad can do something. Please get the book, The End of Alzheimer's Program by Dr. Dale Bredesen. I'll say that again, Nicole. The End of Alzheimer's Program by Dr. Dale Bredesen. Get that book, read it, give it to your dad's primary doctor or neurologist, have them read it and get him on the plan. Watch my free uh, masterclass, How to Prevent Alzheimer's Disease. The link's below my profile. Take, take some actions based upon that. If I can help more, let me know. But your dad, you can help your dad. You can slow down the progress. You can potentially stop it. Depending on how far he is, you might get some memory back. There are things you can do. So yes, you can prevent it and you might be able to help your father as well. I'm sorry, I just had a bunch of skips I, and I, I'm gonna go through all of these. And so I'm sorry that, um, so I'm not answering questions right now. I'm just going through what people posted and I wanna be respectful and, and read all the posts. Okay, next is, is Hold BD Mitch. I'm grateful for my family. I will get healthy next year. Yes, big roar to you. You got this, get healthy this year. Start right now, seriously. You're watching this. If you're if you're here at you know 12 a.m. on Thanksgiving morning, you're committed to health. You're doing this right now. You're great. You got this, Sean. I'm grateful for your information. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. Now, what are you committed to? What are you creating? Shirley, grateful to find you so I can learn the truth about supplements. Thank you, Shirley. I'm grateful you're here too. What supplements are you going to take? What 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 are you creating for yourself, your family, your community? And I I really do appreciate that. I'm going to slow down a little bit so I can receive this. All right. Oh, no, I'm losing power. Hang on. Can I add this to this? Sorry, I got to charge my phone. All right, success. Okay. Adam, I'm grateful for being here and learning from you. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome, Adam. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'd love to hear what you're creating. So here, here's what I'd love from you. If you could do this, your name, what you're grateful for, and something you are creating or committed to creating for yourself, your family, or your community. And this is really, really powerful. When you speak something, when you say it out into the universe, and I'm reading your words, and so this is going out to all... 223 of you, and it's going to be replayed on YouTube. So this is going to be on record forever, right? As long as YouTube's up and my account's in good standing, your words are going to be are going to echo out for a long period of time. So there's power in what you write. And so if you want to create something, whether it's better health, uh, weight loss, preventing Alzheimer's disease, improving your memory, helping a family member improve their memory, something for your family, getting your family off sugar or social media or turning off phones during dinner, or um, you know, more camping as a family, or something for your community, whatever it is, please put it in the chat, and I'll, I'll read it, and then this energy is going out to the universe, okay? Make sense? You don't have to, um, and I'd love to do that for you, and I'd love to do that with you. All right, Wacky Jackie, truly grateful for you. Help my family live better life with my knowledge. Awesome. <laughs> Roar to you. Roar, Adam. Sipping whiskey. I'm grateful for my family and thankful for your videos that help us mentally uh, and pH healthy. Awesome. Thank you, Sipping Whiskey. I appreciate that. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that you're here. Becca, 
Thank you for including your name, Becca. Becca, I'm grateful for health and family and community. Go to the gym. Better yet, tomorrow, when you wake up, why don't you do, here, here's, here's some possibilities. Go for a walk for 10 minutes when you first wake up or do five push-ups, or you know, if you want to do push-ups on your knees, but do something, anything. Just get it going immediately tomorrow. There's a ton of momentum there um, because the gyms aren't open tomorrow. <laughs> At least I don't think they are. But you can do some exercise tomorrow. Just starting your day off with literally five push-ups will make a difference because you got that in your brain, and that'll, and that'll be in your body, and that'll be in your, your physiology, and you'll remember that. You'll remember Thanksgiving tomorrow. You'll be like, I remember Thanksgiving 2022 when I started my day with five push-ups. And that was when I started getting healthy. That's when I started exercising more, going to the gym. So I encourage you to do something, anything. Do jumping jacks. Do five jumping jacks. Minimum five of something. Five jumping jacks, sit-ups, pull-ups, crunches. Walk for five minutes. Do anything. And, and then please come back and tell us about it. Anything you do tomorrow will ripple out into the future in a really powerful way. Awesome. All right. Bonds. Ordered some resveratrol, incorporating fish oils, and improving sleep quality. Awesome, Bonds. That's great. You got some healthy supplements, and you're improving your sleep quality. Are you taking vitamin B complex? If you're taking fish oil, I want you taking vitamin B complex as well. Great job. Dear Mama, I'm working on clean eating. Been doing it since 2006. Always a journey. Awesome. Keep it up. You're doing great. The fact that you're here. Uh, talking about this and you're putting that energy into the universe, it's a big deal. All right, Julie, I'm going to not only survive, but thrive through the winter. Awesome, Julie. You got this. You got this, girl. And I, I, I hope you're here during the winter. I want to hear about your thriving. Okay, Toya Brown. Toya Ann Brown. I'm grateful for being financially solvent to be able to create a safe place in my home for my mom. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so glad you can be there for your mom. Big roar to you. Big, big roar to you. That's awesome. Jim Johnson. Thank you, Dr. Robert. I will stop drinking. Awesome, Jim. I really, I really hope if you want to do that, sincerely, I hope you can do that. Quitting drinking for me has made a huge difference. It's freed up a lot of energy. I've my family likes me a lot better because I'm just nicer, and um, I wish many blessings to you. Hope that's helpful. I hope I hope you can do that. You can do that. I want to hear about your progress. For for Raver's journey, I'm grateful about being a healthy human, trying my best to understand and maintain this only body we have. Awesome. <laughs> grateful to be a human, and you are understanding it. You're here learning about it. Deb, weight loss and be healthier. Awesome, Deb. You got this. You totally got this, Deb. E me knee 97. Oh, that's a question. So I'm not doing questions right now. I'm just reading people's gratitudes and what they're creating. Oh no, skip. Don't skip. Go back to Shirley. There we are, Shirley. I started Lion's Mane today and matcha tea, and I bought veggies from Costco. Awesome. Hope those are organic veggies. You got this, Shirley. Keep doing it. Great job. Coco, I'm eating healthier to live the best life I can. Pass this on to my family and friends. Awesome. Roar to you, Coco. Fantastic. Rebecca, thankful for a career as an RN. I'm guessing that's a registered nurse. That's awesome. We need great nurses. Writing a book to help a specific population this year. Awesome. That's great, Rebecca. Let me know how your book goes. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. Annabelle, I want to work out and eat even better. Yes, you got this. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, start tomorrow. Wake up, do something, do anything. Any exercise tomorrow is the beginning of something really great and powerful in your life. Susan here. Grateful for your knowledge. I've lost 11 pounds of the 100 pounds I need to lose. Walk daily too. Awesome. Great job, Susan. 11 pounds is a great start. You're doing it. Keep up the great work. 
And again, like, like, like some of the other evolving lions, tomorrow's a great day to make progress. Just do a little walking tomorrow. It's a great walking, walking, any exercise tomorrow counts for double. Here's why. So there's an Olympian who shared that she loves to run and train in the rain. Why? Because she knows that the other people aren't training in the rain. So she loves to train in the rain because it counts for double because no one, uh, her competitors aren't doing it. So exercising on Thanksgiving, that counts for double. Um, pushing away dessert or high carbohydrate foods or foods that you know aren't good for you, pushing those away on Thanksgiving, that counts double, at least double. Tanya, I want to help my husband lose weight and feel better about himself. That's great. Great, Tanya. Support your husband uh, with love and support. That's wonderful. And um, that's great. Stanel. Oh, you're asking a question. Sorry, not doing questions right now. Sean. Sean, I am grateful uh, working on reversing my hypothyroidism and avoiding Alzheimer's. I don't know what 2D2 and for avoiding Alzheimer's. Thank you. You are so welcome, Sean. Awesome. Awesome, Sean. Great job. Roar to you. Callisto, thank you very much, Robert, for the valuable information you provide us. You are very welcome. It is my honor. That's why I'm on here for two hours and 40 minutes. This is, this is great. I just love this. If I didn't need to sleep, I would be on here for a very long time. I just love this. All right. Uh, DST, I have the same question. Hard to know. Sweet potato. You have wonderful energy. Thank you. I'm glad you found me too. Thank you. I appreciate that, sweet potato. I'm glad you're here. Speaking real shit. Yes, indeed. Callisto, I'm doing EFT tapping and, qi and Qigong exercise. Awesome. So EFT is really, really powerful. If you have any sort of trauma or you want to free yourself of stuff, it's the emotional freedom technique. It's a tapping technique. It's awesome. Uh, you can find great stuff online about it. And Qigong is super powerful. Uh, find a practitioner in your area and do it with them. It's so cool. I used to do Qigong most mornings. It's great. Original Adder. Um, been loving your post. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. Congratulations, Jim. So great. I stopped drinking soda. Awesome, Luce. Awesome. Soda is so huge. Roar to you. Let's give some love for Luz. That's so awesome. Great job. All right, John. John, I want to create wellness within my community. Grateful for sobriety. Have a great Thanksgiving. Awesome, John. Grateful for your sobriety, too. It's a big deal. It's really great. And I love that you want to create wellness within your community. That's fantastic. Sorry, Isis. I'm not doing questions right now. I just lost my place. Why would you do that, TikTok? We were just at ISIS. Great. I'm thankful for love. Yes, Danelle. Amen. Hallelujah to that. Absolutely. All right, dear mama, quit smoking 1992, pop in 2000, quit gluten in 2013, quit drinking 2015, stop storing dairy 2018. Awesome. You're doing it, dear mama. Keep it up. Yeah. What's next? Sarah, I want to start healthy choices, but not sure where to begin. Advice on vitamins needed. Um, all right. So you want to start making more healthy choices. Um, I would recommend going onto YouTube and rewinding this TikTok. There's a ton of stuff I talk about, about losing weight, about preventing diabetes, about healthy supplements, all kinds of things. A great place to start is just daily exercise. Just five, 10 minutes of walking first thing in the morning. It's terrific. I'm good, Shirley. I'm glad you're getting the organic produce from Costco. That's great. Dana, so great for you for you sharing all this amazing info. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. I received that. I appreciate that. Dear mom, it's been a journey. You smoke two packs a day. Oh my gosh. Wow. It's a lot. Welcome to good health. All right. Nimis Nagels. Thank you for my children. I will eat healthier and exercise to possibly live longer for them. That's wonderful. All right. Roar to you. Wow. I, I really feel that. Living longer for your children. Yes. Yes, please. Scoop, thank you for those beautiful emojis. Roar Susan from Wacky Jackie. 
Dear Mom, it's so cool to read all these comments. I know. I love all the things you all are putting in here. Lizzie Garcia. Thank you for your videos. I've been very depressed. My anxiety has been worse. You're welcome for my videos. And I sincerely hope that you've learned something and that you're doing something that can be helpful to you. And so a supplement for anxiety is L-theanine. I like this. I take this at night. This just helps reduce stress. And exercise is great. And get some hugs, Lizzie. Let's all send, let's send Lizzie some love. Let's, let's send her some, some loving comments, some supportive comments. This is the lion's den. We're here to love and support each other. And that sounds really difficult, Lizzie. And so please get lots of hugs tomorrow. Eight. If you're watching this, anyone who's watching this, let's get eight. I'm going to do this myself. Get eight long hugs. And I, I actually need to preface this. You want to hug for about 30 seconds. And so when you hug someone, I'm going to ask all my family members, hey, can I give you a long hug? Like, can we hug for 30 seconds? I'm going to get permission. Doing that eight times, you will feel the neurochemical difference. So please get lots of hugs tomorrow. All right, Lizzie, sending you lots of love and support. All right, Chris Green, CPA. Move from turmeric to curcumin. Awesome. That's huge. That's like a 20x difference. Seriously, curcumin is 20x more powerful than, um, than that. How can I find curcumin only, only supplement? Search for it. Attitude of gratitude for who you are and all you do. Thank you. Attitude of gratitude. I appreciate that. I, I love being able to do this. I feel very fulfilled and very grateful that I can be here uh, online at 12, 24 a.m. Thanksgiving morning expressing gratitude with 200 awesome people. You rock. Shirley, Thanksgiving dinners, wild salmon and veggies, dark chocolate for dessert. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Big road to Shirley. You got it. You got it, Shirley. That's exactly right. You can have a great Thanksgiving dinner that's delicious and super healthy for your brain. Let me know what people think. How can you not love that? The wild caught salmon's great, veggies are great, and dark chocolate for dessert. What's not to love? That's such a winner. I don't know why Lied Lion's Mane affects vivid dreams. It does, though. It's very cool. My Thanksgiving dinner is going to be salmon, Brussels sprouts, and turnip greens. Awesome, Tink Fair. Yes. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Sorry, I'm not answering questions right now. South side hugs. It's multi magnesium supplements. Good. I don't know which one you're referring to. Qigong is freaking amazing. Totally. All right. I just lost my place. Roar to dear mama. Sugar's next. Hopefully awesome. Dear mama. I do recommend Dale Bredesen's research. He's awesome. He is the pioneer. He's my hero. He's amazing. Okay, got back. So someone who's already had a diagnosis, uh, I would get, yes, it's worth trying, absolutely. I would recommend, get Dr. Dale Bredesen's book and sign up for my free um, masterclass and go from there. There's so many things to do to help someone who's already been diagnosed. Seriously, so many. I learn from you every time. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Ivana. I so appreciate that. Advice on weight gain. Yeah, just Amanda. Uh, go to YouTube and rewind this, this live. We talk a lot about uh, weight loss and sustainable weight loss. Sugar's next. You got that, dear mama. Roar to dear mama. Awesome, Mike and Jackie. Eden, please, any alternatives for sardines? Um, fish oil or herring or wild-caught salmon or omega-3 algae oil. Ivana, love prickly pear blossom. What is your name? Pick, prickly pear blossom. Would you put your name please? Um, cause you gave up sugar with magnesium, right? Talbert girl, lots of smiley faces. Hugs, Lizzie. Awesome. Surely no sugar, just monk fruit, no bread. Awesome. Lizzie, lots of hugs to wacky Jackie. Hugs to Lizzie praying for you. Awesome. Love this. Or wacky Jackie, lots of, lots of love to Lizzie. Awesome. So, so Lizzie, I don't know if you see all these wonderful things. There's lot, there's, Lovely messages from other evolving minds. I love this wonderful community that we've built together. This is really great. Hugs to Lizzie. I bought curcumin at a local health store. Awesome, dear mama. You rock it, it. Lizzie, electronic hugs for you. <laughs> yes. Very nice. Raw pumpkin pie. All right, Stanel. That sounds delicious. Do you have a good recipe? Let me know. Alive, never going to die. I don't know about never going to die, but you're alive. I just hugs to Lizzie. Nice glasses. Thank you. If your mom has Lewy body, should you get tested for the APOE4? Not a bad idea. 
Lori. Okay, prickly pear blossom. So here's the story. Lori was addicted to sugar. I think you were addicted to sugar and you were able to quit sugar by taking magnesium. That was able to help you. Is that right, Lori? And then if you want to give me any more details, if you want to give me a state or city that you're from, how old you were, how long it took, because I'd like to be able to tell your story with a little bit more details to flesh it out so that way it feels more like a story than just a, a small data, just a data point, if you're willing to share. Or you can make something up, right? Because then I could, I, I'd love to share a location, uh, anything about how overweight you were or how addicted you were, if you were eating 10 Twinkies a day, anything that would help me flesh out the story would be great if you're willing to share. Okay, Jonathan, intermittent fasting helps my anxiety and energy. Awesome. Yes, Lizzie, for anxiety, going low carb is really helpful. Any advice on epilepsy? Yes, uh, the ketogenic diet. There's great documentation on that. Check out the documentary, um, Fat, Fat Number One. Dear Mama, just took magnesium biglycinate. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, L-tyrosine and L-theanine, Phoenix, those are different amino acids. So L-tyrosine is a precursor to dopamine. It's stimulating. L-theanine is in green tea. It's relaxing. So they're actually, they're pretty much opposites, but they're both amino acids. You know, it's an amino acid when it starts with an L. It's a good indication. I'm sorry, Carson. Um, I apologize for that. Would you please send me an email at robertwblove at gmail.com and I'll, I'll, I'll get you scheduled. I'll, I'll take your call myself um, early next week. I'm sorry. I, I sincerely apologize about that. I'd hug for Lizzie. So, so Carson, my, my email again is robertwblove at gmail.com or I'll send you an email and uh, I need your birthday and then I'll send you the memory test. I'm really sorry about that. Magnesium glycinate, three and low carb diet. So that helped. Um, can you tell me how much sugar you were eating, eating Lori? All right, Lizzie there, Chris says, Lizzie, there is hope. Stay away from the sugar. Awesome. So Lizzie, you're getting lots of love and support here. And so I want you to know that this is a community that, that cares for you, cares about you and wants to help. Any comments on YouTube for what you're grateful for? All my YouTube people left. Or some of you are on there, you're just not saying words. Oh my gosh, it's almost at three hours. We're going to try to stop around three hours. This is way too much fun. Lizzie, I'm including you in my prayers tonight. Thank you, Wacky Jackie. Where can I send the recipe? Um, great question. Oh, so here's a little trick. If you want to send me a message, friend me, follow me on Instagram. Because right now um, I can receive messages there. I can't really receive messages on um on TikTok. And so if you want to get a message to me, that's the best place. And my Instagram is the same as my TikTok. It's Robert WB Love. And um, so you can send me a message there or you can send me an email at Robert WB Love at gmail.com. I'm just, I, I, I like to take it at night, lines me at night because I get cool dreams. All right, prickly pear blossom, 53 years old, lost 60 pounds on reverse diabetes. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So here's what I got. So I'm, so Lori, I'm going to try to tell your story. I want to make sure I got this. This is really cool. So I have an L3 and 8 is, is a type of magnesium. It's magnesium 3 and 8. So, so Lori was 53 years old. It sounds like you were addicted to sugar and you were 60 pounds overweight and you had type 2 diabetes. You started taking more magnesium and you did something else. What else did you do? You, uh, oh, you went on the low carb diet and you started taking magnesium. You quit sugar and over a certain amount of time, I don't know how long, you're able to lose 60 pounds and reverse your type 2 diabetes. Is that right? That's great. That's amazing. Yes, yeah, Sam, for Thanksgiving, such a good idea. You are so welcome, Jesse. It's my pleasure. Lots of support for Prickly Player Blossom. Awesome, Elisa. Great job downloading the supplement guide. That's great. Send it to your friends and family. Print it up. Enjoy it. Prickly Player Blossom, congrats. Okay. 
Very cool. All right. Thank you so much for the, this is the last one. So I think this is the last one. Thank you so much for the great energy in this live. I just found you on Instagram today. Trudy from Canada. Awesome, Trudy. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Interesting. You found me on Instagram and you got me here. This, the, most people find me on TikTok and then go to Instagram. All right. Very cool. It is now Thanksgiving Day. Uh, so uh, TK10014. 59. My mom passed away. Aged last year with mixed dementia. Last year, I'm worried I have some. So you're in the right place. I'm sorry to hear about your mom. This this is the lion's den. We are evolving lions here. We are committed to loving and supporting each other, to learning about how to improve our health and wellness, and to prevent Alzheimer's disease. You are in the right place. If there's one place to be to help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease, this might this is one of them. There's not just one place. There's many places. This is definitely one of them. Welcome. It's great to have you here. I have lots of content on TikTok about how to do this. If you want to watch this live or a bunch of lives. I don't know how, how many I have on YouTube. I think I have at least 15 at this point. 15 lives that you can watch anytime on YouTube. You can rewind, fast forward, take notes. I have a free um, free masterclass on how to prevent Alzheimer's disease. So anyone here who's interested in learning about how to prevent Alzheimer's disease, if you don't already have it, um, you go below my profile. There's a link there. Scroll down, uh, free masterclass, enter your name and email. I'll send you access to my free masterclass. That's, that's great. And then if you want the supplements that I take for my brain and the brands that I get and where I buy them, you can get that under, under my profile as well, under the link there. Uh, Nimis Nagels, that's where Elisa got my um, free report on my supplements. Dear Mama, I, you did need this chat. I don't want to say need. This was good for you. I think this was good for you. And I'm glad you were here. Thank you for your contribution. Sincerely. Thank you. And welcome. Welcome to the lion's den. Who's an evolving lion here? Who's really into the lion's den right now? Give me a roar. Give me a roar. If you know your home, if, th if th this is your vibe, if these are your people, give me a roar here. Thank you for the great info on neurogenesis. You are so welcome. Your daughter's recovering. Well, I hope that's really helpful. Roar from Lori. Roar from Debo. Ivano, roar. Good night, lion's den. Roar. Roar for you, Chris Green CPA. Positively green energy, positively positive energy vibe. Roar, roar from Talbert, roar from Mon Major, roar from Nimis Nagels, roar from Karina, roar from Ali, roar from Talbert Girl. Oh, you found me on TikTok, Trudy. Awesome, and roar to you too. This is wonderful. Roar from Wacky Jackie, roar from BK Up, roar from Jonathan, roar from Snell, roar from Callisto. So many roars. This is awesome, Lions. This is so awesome. All right. I'm going to be on here for another five minutes or so. Um, roar from New Jersey. Yeah, if you're just getting here, put your first name, where you're from. If you're an evolving lion, give me a roar. So so Tiny Gargoyle, Goyle, so Sheila Jeet, if I remember correctly, increases, um, basically it increases uh, glutathione. Glutathione is the, mass, the body's master antioxidant. That's probably a good thing. Let me confirm that. I think it's glutathione. She legit glutathione. Let me just look at benefits of a she legit. I'm pretty sure it's. By the way, one of my favorite resources is um, is Healthline. Healthline's very well researched articles. They link to the studies. So Shilajit contains fulvic acid, which is an, an antioxidant. I think it helps make glutathione. It helps improve the body's immune system and memory, anti-inflammatory, energy booster, booster, diuretic, helps remove excess fluid. I think it might have anti-aging properties or longevity properties because it's antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. There's not, I think it's relatively new. There's not a whole lot of um, data on it. May help with testosterone. The benefits to Alzheimer's disease, I think, because it's antioxidant capacity. So basically, if I understand it, she than just taking a full bit, full of acid supplement, potentially. She was the sound like it's more of a, a food than a refined supplement. So it's often better to get our supplements in foods or get it in its more natural source than just taking a refined supplement. So it could have benefit there. Um, 
I don't know. There's not a lot of long-term data. It's relatively new. And so it's likely healthy. It's very likely to be unhealthy or dangerous. And it's worth trying and seeing if you experience a benefit. All right, Roar, happy Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. Woo! It is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving! Woo! This is great. Oh, so here, let me show you something I'm really thankful for. First, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for TikTok. I'm thankful for the channel that and the content that I've created and the wonderful people who like it. I'm grateful for you that, that this is something valuable to you, something that you like, something you're supporting. I'm grateful for the I'm grateful for the benefit that I've been able to. I'm grateful that I've been able to help you, and I'm so grateful that I've gotten feedback from you that this has been helpful. I'm grateful that my gifts are being received. Um, I, I'm, I'm really grateful that I can be on here live for three hours talking to you and answering questions, and this is something that's valuable to you, and it's really valuable to me. I love this. I love that this is helpful to you. So I'm really grateful for that. My mother's having uh, a shoulder replacement in a couple of weeks, and she asked me to come and uh, help around the house and help her and help my dad while she's recovering. And so I'm grateful that I have that relationship with my parents where they can ask me for help and I can be helpful. That feels really good to me. I'm glad I can support my parents there. And I'm so grateful for the, uh, this year was the first year that I helped run the speaker series at my Burning Man camp, Camp Mystic. And we had a great speaker series. Paul Stamets was there. For example, we had a great talk on neuroscience and psychedelics. We had great talks on health and wellness, on relationships, on technology, and I'm grateful for that opportunity to contribute that. And I'm really grateful for my mentors, for my friends. Um, I got to stay with some friends in Austin, and I got so much work done, and I enjoyed living with them. It was great. So I'd, I'd work, and then I'd come out to the kitchen and hang out for a little bit and go back and work. And it, it, if, you, if you live with friends or you live with loving people, you know what a difference it makes being around great people. And I just, I, I'm so grateful for the art in my life. Let me show you this. This is one of my favorite pieces of art. This is called Gaia. This is made by Min Jae Lee. Min Jae Lee is a man from South Korea. This was painted by hand. This is this is this is done with razor sharp markers on very very thin paper. And this is about the size of it. So the, the painting's about this size. This is one of my favorite paintings. I'm so blessed to have this. For me, this is like having the Mona Lisa in my house. I look at this. I feel happy. I feel blessed. I'm so grateful. This is meant to be the goddess Gaia, who's the Greek goddess of Earth. And when I look into her eyes, I feel love and support and compassion. And I love that she has brown eyes because I feel that brown eyes, much more so than blue, a lot of people from around the world can look into her eyes and identify with someone they know because many because many more humans have brown eyes than blue eyes or green eyes, for example. So I love her eyes. I love her eye makeup, how it almost looks like she's crying. Maybe she's crying for the earth, but also still powerful and loving. And I just, I love this painting. I'm so grateful that I have access to this art. And if I'm in a poor mood or, or even if I'm in a good mood, I want to feel better. I just, I love it. I'm so grateful for this. And so I'm, I'm so grateful for the blessing of art in my life and that I can have wonderful art like this. By the way, um, my friend and mentor, his name's Eben Pagan. He commissioned this piece of art. He collaborated on this piece of art and he exposed me to this piece of art. He shared this with me and he introduced me to the artist. So I actually, I've gotten to communicate with Min Jae and tell him how much I appreciate his art. And so I feel so grateful that I actually, I have some of the art of some of my favorite, of my favorite living artist. Min Jae is my favorite living artist. And and that I've gotten to communicate with him and tell him how much I love his art. So I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful that I live at this time when on my iPhone, I have access to some of the greatest musicians and composers ever. I have access to Mozart, Beethoven, Bach. Um, Wagner, Brahms, um, you name it. I could li I listened to Rhapsody in Blue two nights ago as I was eating dinner. Amazing. And that's available for free. Oh my 
gosh, can you imagine what Mozart would do if he was alive now and he took his phone and said, wait, you tell me on this thing, I can listen to all of my music and I can listen to all of his music and all of their music played by the best musicians? Really? Are you kidding me? That's the time that we live in. And, um, you know, if, if you want to put your put, just tell me where you're from right now. There are people from all around the world, I think. There are people from um, the Philippines. There's people from Australia. There's people from around the United States. There's, um, you know, there's oftentimes people from, from Saudi Arabia. There's so many people from around the world. So when, uh, Lori's from Oklahoma. We're all gathered here for free, sharing knowledge and sharing virtual space together. This is amazing. The, the time that we're a uh, uh, Turkey. So someone's from Turkey. Someone's from New, Katie's from New Jersey. This is amazing. When on earth, when, when in the history of mankind, have we been able to gather virtually for free in a way like this? Colorado, Michigan, this is amazing. And so I'm so grateful for this technology. I mean, I'm able to make recordings in my kitchen of um, a food that I eat. I'm able to take pictures and make videos and say, hey, here's, here's why uh, this salad is so he healthy for you. Here's why asparagus and Brussels sprouts and broccoli are so healthy for you. Here's how I cook them. Here's the brand that I like. Um, have a great dinner. And, and thousands of people can watch that and then make healthy choices. That's amazing. I I'm so grateful to be alive at this time, truly. I, it's, it's such a blessing. All right. Have we reached the three-hour point yet? I think we're there three hours and five minutes all right i don't know what else to say except happy thanksgiving i love you and i'm so grateful truly i'm so grateful thank you for spending your day before thanksgiving evening here now i may come on tomorrow i may not i'm going over to the family's house to my cousin's house for dinner tomorrow night i think i'll be back something around between nine and ten and I don't know if I'm going to feel up to doing a live. I will probably come on because I just want to say hi. And if you're, please don't leave family time to come on and hang out on TikTok. Please spend time with your family, with your friends, with your loved ones. Share with them some, excuse me, share with them some of the wonderful things you're doing in your life. Share with them your, where do I, where do I live? So I'm moving to Miami right now. I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. I love you too, user 9832. 332-0066-2485. Um, thank you, Karina. And so please be present with your family. Please don't be checking your phone. I, I, I don't know if this goes without saying, please don't be checking your phone. I'm going to try not to show off my TikTok to my family. Be like, look, look at all the fans I have. Look at my videos. I'm going to try not to do that. I'm just going to try to be present with them. And so please be present with those you love. Set an example of being present, of not being checking your phone, of just enjoying family. Take photos. Please take photos and please send them to your family. Um, but please be present with them. And then please enjoy the rest of your evening with them. Please don't leave dinner to come early to hang out on TikTok. And if dinner's over and you want to hang out tomorrow night, I'll probably pop on for 30, 30 to 60 minutes. I'm not sure how long, but I'd love to say hi to you and love to hear how your Thanksgiving dinner was what um, what you talked about, what you're grateful for. And this has been a blast. Seriously, it's one of my favorite lives. It's one of, this is, if I can think about it, this is my favorite day before Thanksgiving evening. Seriously, it's because of you. It's, it's because we got to spend this time together and because you were so engaged and active and asking questions and because so many of you added what you're thankful for and what you're going to do. It's so moving. And thank you for being courageous and saying what you wanted to do and sharing some details from your life. And because that's now going to be recorded and that's going to, that's available on YouTube. And so people are going to be watching this for however long people watch it. And so, so your positive vibes, your positive energy is going out there to the world. So thank you sincerely. Thank you so, so much. So very, very grateful. Have a wonderful night. Have great sleep. I love you. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. I will talk to you soon.